You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Gelenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 116 with a cold one and whale. Both your third time uh, on the cast. So welcome back, both of you. Hey, thanks, man. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was in the car with you guys driving back to the airport, driving Bodie back to the airport, or well, driving me back to the airport, technically, um, after our trip to Tennessee. How'd you guys like the trip? Because you, you guys have had meetups before, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've been to most of them at this point, or all of them, I think, at least like the, the base ones that we've done. Yeah, all the ones where you were invited, all the private ones, yeah, where we didn't invite you, you didn't go to those. No. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it just comes with the territory. <laughs> yeah, based, uh, based moon, Yeah, you didn't get to go to that one, you couldn't, you couldn't afford the rocket up there, probably. Yeah, I also didn't have a passport, so I'm lucky. Well, you don't need pa- passports for intergalactic travel, my friend. Doesn't somebody the own fuck? the moon or something like that? Like somebody like claimed they owned it. I swear I've heard yeah, that me. before. You saw it. <laughs> that was it was my first time though, after like four years of solitude of like streaming and never going to any events. I mean Rune I would have planned to go to like every Rune Fest, but the year I started streaming was the last year they did it. And I was too young of a streamer to even like be recognized at Rune Fest. Not like I would go to be recognized, but just I, I wouldn't have gone as just a, a baby streamer. Right. But, uh, and then RuneFest got canceled, and then I just never went to really any meetup. So it was great. It was a great time. RuneFest yeah, 2019 but... was nice, but like we didn't really spend that much time at the venue when we went there in 2019. Like most of the time, we just spent in the town itself or like at Spoons or something. Yeah. And like, when what was the year where Skidler punched Grow Score? I keep, I keep rehearing that story on the Base After Dark casts. <laughs> that was probably 2018. If that's the one I'm thinking of, where like he like accosted that girl or whatever. If it's that year, then yeah, yeah. it was 18. Okay, 2018. Yeah. See, like I I hear back to those kind of stories. I'm like, man, I really missed an era of just there. I feel like okay, a cold one. You started streaming what around the time I did? Maybe late 2018 or no? It's probably like early 2018, right? For you? Yeah, quote unquote, consistently around like 18, 19, like around that time frame. Okay, and you, Whale? What, what what were you? Were you a 2020 Andy? I mean, I started in like late 2017, got consistent around uh, early to middle of 19. Okay, you started in 2017, like you yeah, streamed my, here and there. My, my first ever stream was a uh, Grotesque Guardians release. Oh shit! Yeah, that was 2017. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was like October twenty seventeen ish. Are you fucking kidding me? Grotesque Guardians was twenty seventeen. That still feels so recent. I don't know why. I know it's yeah. not recent because it was a mod Kieran project. Oh man, damn. And, yeah, yeah. And you remember when they like refused to let us skip the intro because the artist worked so long on it? So we ha- always had yeah. to just continually watch the the statues wake up after the bell, <laughs> like do all. Yeah, that, that was super cool. <laughs> I, I did one I trip like, and said, I'll wait until they allow us to skip it, and then maybe I'll go back. And then they did that. <laughs> I was just doing it blind on release, and I kept fucking praying mage because the little the little blobs were purple. I was like, why am I getting fucked up so bad? <laughs> um, I mean, it makes uh, sense. Like, gargles are magic, aren't they? Like, magically like that. animated stone. Like, yeah, that's, you know, that's it only true. makes sense. That's true. Yeah, grotesques were kind of a bitch back then. They were a lot different. Like, well, actually, no, it wasn't. There, there was a time when they were a bitch. Initially, they weren't because Blowpipe was just destructive. I think after the Blowpipe nerf, they became really annoying. Was that the case? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, they were always fucking annoying, but yeah, yeah, that's true. It was all just based around going for the skip. I mean, yeah, basically, if if they would just like, okay, you know what would actually fix grotesques? I no, well, nothing would fix it actually. I, I don't know. I feel like they could have done better with just the l- random piles of loot on the ground. I feel like it would have been cool because I f- they should have designed the boss around the idea that you're going to be in the boss room for quite a bit, killing it. 
And if there had just been like a chest or just one spot on the ground where everything stacks, well, actually, that would be dangerous. But if it was like a chest where all your loot ends up being there and you can just like bank it uh, from there or just... I don't like that. <laughs> really? I kind of like the idea of just like all the loot being on the floor. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a grizzled boomer or something. M maybe, yeah. I'm just like having all the shit just like floating around. You like right click like, oh, what's in this pile? Ooh, what's in this pile? Dude, I get uh -huh. stressed the fuck out when just everything's on the ground, especially when I never know exactly what the despawn timers are because every single instance is different it feels like yeah forgive me but i have to say the line but uh from a uim perspective that'd be a bit busted <laughs> i mean doesn't but isn't that deep down whatever uim actually wants like they don't want to admit no. it but they actually like the convenience of little updates here and there i mean a lot of them probably. do yeah but not you it really depends yeah yeah i'm built guess. completely differently uh, okay so I what guess. what was the best easy scape uim update that you actually liked that made it actually just way easier uh or was i mean it? i wasn't i wasn't playing at the time but i think noted potions really like made pvm a lot more viable a lot of people not gonna like that but i mean you know i i think noted potions were overall good for the game mode as far as like making it not just a fucking skilling mode mm. Yeah, the noted pots was basically the biggest devaluation, right? Something like that. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I mean, at the same time, like, fucking... But it probably made the game also, just better, just more fun. Yeah, but, like, it was also, like... Like, the people who complain about noted potions are, a lot of times, like, people who were playing whenever you would get, like, ten noted brews from Zora. So, mm, I mean, it's kind of... Dude, those were the days, man. Yeah. Those are, those are awesome. Yeah, that was sick, but, uh, you know, unlucky. Yeah. Dude, think about it. There was a time and place where Zora dropped 10 noted brews, 10 noted uh, bird's nests. Callisto dropped 75 noted bird's nests. And then Jack's like, this isn't fun. They should try bird houses. Yeah, yeah, no. I love a good hour. <laughs> Them getting rid of the Callisto version, like the, the seven, that was the iconic Callisto drop. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. the, why did they get rid of that? I could understand the Zora a little bit, kind of. Oh, yeah, no, Zora's broken as fuck. Yeah, like I could understand that entire nerf, but really, you're just gonna shut. What did they even put in place of it? Like three nothing. Snapdragon seeds or something? I feel I, I feel like know. it was nothing of value, if not nothing. Mm. But it changed it because like three Max Iron Men complained saying like, "Oh, this is busted. <laughs> People that just attack a monster get a bird's nest." I I chopped a redwood tree for four days to get ten of them or some shit. Yeah. I, I can understand them trying to make items and resources come from their original sources. I can understand that take. I actually think it could be done very well, but just like artificially nerfing. I don't know, but I was just really butthurt with the Callisto drop nerf. I just thought that was so stupid. Like, it doesn't matter if there's one place. Because you're you're already having Mole drop all these nests, and you could argue that's... Its source is mole dropping fucking bird nest, basically. I mean, not actually, but a guy that just trades him in for it. But you could have that just had sense, one other place to just. You know. I don't think I think the whole uh, having like items come from a quote unquote source that like makes iconic sense kind of just doesn't exist anymore because like you just do a raid in TOA and you get like two thousand dragon dart tips and I haven't seen a single dragon in there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like those what, things are made out of dragon nails. That's how you make the dart tips or something. Dude, I've, I'm I love how the gems are just cut. Like, that is just so really annoying. Funny to me. Dude, that's so, fucking it's rules. So fucking fu yeah, no, that's good shit. It's really fucking funny. No, it's so annoying. It's so annoying when, <laughs> like, why are the gems? That is literally the best part about crafting is sitting at the bank cutting entire inventory of uncut gems, and you already do the uh, fucking work for us. Like, god damn it, dude. Oh, nope. man, just, like, buy some uncut gems, then. Yeah, if you're an Iron Man, consider de-ironing or just go do a cox. You'll get Bro, plenty of uncut gems. I have actually been talking about that quite a bit, how the the days where, like, people looked up to Iron Men because they were, like, respectable accounts is far, oh, yeah, no, far from over. That gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. I, it's literally main man mode now. If you're not a main, you're just trolling, basically, at this point. Oh, or yeah. you I am. Nah, I'm sorry. Now you're it's, trolling. It's, you're trolling. No, no, too. everybody loves UIMs. It's sick. It's I will say, you can UIMs literally actually... buy a Tebow on an Iron Man now if you want. Look what fucking Ginger Beardy did. Just AFK in a raid <laughs> and then wait until the end and she's like, oh, I got a Tebow. 
Nice. Okay, we we listen. People actually still get butthurt about that. Raids was actually originally designed as a PVM slash skilling sort of like dungeoneering experience. It wasn't necessarily yeah. built as a PVM only, and now people are cheating the system by skilling. I don't know. I I think I've heard too many zoomers out there thinking it's no, like i still think chambers of eric is one of the best pieces of content like by design like if not like the best one yeah i mean the ohm fight at least the rest of it's kind of eh. dude the sheer fact that a tebow is still over a bill seven years later or six years oh yeah it's been six years six years yeah. later it's it, that's remarkable honestly that's yeah. in the game dude i mean yeah I mean that that's pretty cool that something that came out six years ago. I, I mean, dude, that was really the prime. Twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen, those were prime pieces of content. You had Chambers, Inferno, and Tob all within a year. Yeah. And those to this day are still recognized as just like, like you can still obtain that feeling that you first got getting your first Infernal Cape. You know, like people can still live that. Not saying like we. I'm not saying like a cold one would relive that joy every time, but people can still live that joy of getting their own first infernal cape and getting you know a Tebow, and obviously Tob is still like great fun. And I mean, you're yeah, like fifty percent right with that. Like when you make a new account, like I'm making a bunch of like new accounts right now since God bless Bounty Hunters finally getting released. So like I'm making all the different builds, but like when you get your first infernal cape on like a new account, like one that's got zero KC, it it feels kind of cool. It's like yeah, I just got that. Now he's all caped up. He's all grown up. <laughs> caped up. And, uh, it's just like, it's a different feel. It's definitely not first infernal cape feeling, but it's like it, it's just good. I don't know. Yeah, I imagine it'll feel cool. pretty good whenever I uh, end up getting the cape on the pure. But still gotta train that fucker. So you also need to give him membership. No, nah, he's he he has membership these days. I got seventy oh. crafting today. Oh, Jeezy. go on. MM two yeah. time? Uh we're working on the requirements, yeah. I got a gel to do knocked out too. Mm. Better not see you in my slayer caves. I mean, look, I may or may not have some hellhounds right now that may or may not have to be killed in the wilderness. So Oh yeah. what, is your combat level close to seventy by any chance? It is just so close to seventy, as a matter of fact. If you oh. see just a big ass forehead at the uh, at the Hellhounds, you know, maybe consider offing your boy. That would be that's great. A, that's incredible. You know, I have ninety magic on this account. That is seventy three combat. I think I might have to take a little stroll over there uh, over yonder and see what I can find. Uh, nothing, nothing worth finding. Don't worry about it. Yeah, listen, fifty k is fifty k. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> hey, man. Everybody got to eat. <laughs> oh my god. So, what do you think, Whale? A cold one's made it pretty clear he likes raids two, oh, raids two. Imagine me still calling a raid two. He likes Tob over the other raids. What about you? I'm still a Cox Andy. Nice. Oh no, I, I, I think I can I can do Tob for longer sessions, but like I don't know, Solo Cox just holds a very special place in my heart. Like that was like seeing people do that is what made me want to get good at the video game. Yeah, dude, I still remember right before I had started straight, not maybe, maybe not right before, but when Chambers first came out and do you, I don't know if you guys remember Hauke's solo raid streams, just literally. I didn't really watch much Hauke. Yeah, I was go back. Bruh, Hauke, he was like one of the early people on the solo Chambers train, like that could actually efficiently do it and look good doing it. And watching his stream, I just remember back then, like, this is, keep in mind, this is a time where I was very impressed by people in the, f I was impressed by Alfie one tick flicking his mage prayer in the fight caves. Like, I thought that was, like, <laughs> so ridiculous that he would risk that, you know, like, what if it turned off, you know, I used to actually think that was really impressive. You know, we'd call you a daytime chat if you said that in the Twitch chat today. <laughs> You're like, hey, buddy, the phone streams that way. Do you, uh, you get out of the daycare or something? <laughs> Dude, I even remember the days where Foe was learning how to one-tick flick. Um, and there's just a memory still implanted in my brain of him in Neve's cave killing, um, I think they were fire giants. <laughs> Neve's cave trying to learn how to one tick flick and him struggling with it 
but he was trying to learn it. I was like, man, I should really try to learn this too. And so I, I remember it, dude, it took me fucking months to actually finally nail down one tick prayer flicking using the prayer orb. That, that shit took me so long to get down, I swear. And it was painful at first because I was so tense doing it. You have a just remember, really, uh, really old memory. Go first, Whale. I got mine still. Okay. Yeah, I remember learning lazy flicking in Neve's Cave at Aberrant Specters because I would make my prayer go up at the same time as the green ball would appear above their head whenever they did their attack animation. Mm. I was like, oh, this is sick. And then I tried to do it at Fire Giants and their five tick and I just lost my fucking mind. <laughs> now, what was yours? A cold one. All right, so I remember uh like very shortly after the inferno came out uh me and rice cup were doing like some group raids at chambers and we didn't have our infernal capes yet this is like maybe two weeks after release of inferno and they were like okay but like you know learning one tick flicking is like kind of valuable so like we just practice anytime we were scaving like just one tick flicking the orb and see how long we'd actually like, be able to hold rhythm for it without it breaking and that was just like our way to practice like whenever we weren't doing inferno and uh, yeah, that, that's how I learned how to one tick flick, just practicing on scabs and raids. Damn. I got consistent at one tick flicking by uh, fucking doing it at Arma. <laughs> it's like, if you fuck it up, you're taking a 60, unlucky. Yeah. I, no. don't even, I don't even chance that shit there. I don't care. I do. I, I, I do here and there. It depends. I've, I've like, re I have my own special <laughs> Arma process that I do. And it, like, depending on the supplies I have, if I have, if I have very low restores, I'll just one tick flick. It, like yep. assuming I have a lot of food, and if I don't have any food, then I'll do like the shield flicking bullshit. But yep, that's what I would do. Yeah, can't believe I had to do that shit twice, man. That was fucked up. Dude, you went giga dry on that boss twice, and like I thought I had for the a bag, same so fucking like, item. Dude, I went dry on the thing for like thirteen hundred or something on my iron, and that was the last like PVM item I got before I de iron. That was like the only thing I was missing. And then you beat my dry streak, not once, but twice. Like, like who did you, like, fuck over at, like, Jagex headquarters or something? I mean, you know. It, like, it, whose family it, did you kill? It evens out in the end. Watching, like, seeing Iron Man with just armor legs <laughs> in the DI top is literally, like, the, the cutest thing you can ever see. It hurts. Top, top. It hurts so bad. <laughs> Dude, now the, now the setup is a fortified Missouri chaps and unfortified Missouri top. <laughs> dude it's wild you don't even need to like get all three items from armor you just need to get all three items from like Missouri and then just get all the components from armor yo yep. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah the dude I, now. i'm still missing the, the that, top the fucking dude that i knocked down from a uh, rank two armor was uh literally just trying to get all the components for Missouri, uh, but he just kept getting fucking helmets every time <laughs> <laughs> plus one <laughs> yeah it was sick <laughs> Yeah, I hate about like horror stories like this, and it makes me so happy I don't play that fucking game mode anymore. I am like over the moon that I'm just not doing that shit ever again. And the best part is, is like it's actually respectable now too. Like the the community agrees now. It seems it seems like there's this overwhelming presence of like if you're a main, you're in the cool group. You know, like you've actually you <laughs> you you've come to the light basically, and you've realized that this game's a lot more enjoyable as a main. I still yeah, haven't gotten like to that point. I don't know if I ever will get to that point, unfortunately. Because <laughs> you're just like well too established. Those and I, like your account just loaded right now. Yeah. Like occasionally, I like look at your the uh, the YouTube video when I'm like watching one of your Sebe casts, and like when you're banking something, like let's say like doing something at the furnace in Shallow Village, whatever the hell. Yeah. And I see your bank. You got like a half a mil like sapphires, and there was some bullshit. I don't know the exact <laughs> count, but I'm just like this dude's like bank account just looks like a fucking like bot farm. Just like did not get banned for ten years or something. It just has everything, yeah. just chilling in there. Yeah, it's kind of it's it's hard, especially because uh, you know I've been asked. I was, uh, by a bunch of people in my stream and stuff like are you ever gonna make a new account or are you, are you ever gonna like make a group iron man or make a hardcore or anything like that and honestly if i had incredible fire first of all if if i had incredible fire for this game as if like you know i was just going really hard i don't even think i'd consider making a new account because i'd be going so so hard on this account but the lack of fire would make me remaking an account so uninteresting like in order to make an interesting 
uh, series or whatever you're going to do with a new account, you have to be incredibly motivated and you have to go super hard at first. If you're just stuck in like the early game for a few months, it's just going to be the most depressing thing ever. Um, and also, like you said, it's almost like I've been, I'm established as a high level Iron Man at this point, which, you know, could change and stuff, but I don't know. I kind of, I, I still enjoy the, uh, late game grind for the most part. Yeah. So that guy, like, so kind of, that guy kind of got, got gassed up for Iron Man a little bit now. Like anyone that hasn't done like, you know, banking 200 mil prayer or crafting or something. Cause I know like iron's like max efficiency. You have to kill like 30,000 Vorkath or something. And if you just didn't do that and you waited until they release this new scaly shit or whatever, Bruh. you just got like a bunch of free herb secondaries. <laughs> like dude, the, <laughs> the new scaly blue hide, that shit is, so I did like, I don't know, a hundred Vorkath kills just this in the past couple days. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was getting like a that drop like every like seven kills basically. I know it's a one in ten, I think, but yeah, that shit is literally just fifty scales. Just I gotta know, like I, I gotta. I don't think anyone will have the answer here. I really just need to know which like J mods Iron Man is trying to go for two hundred mil her blur because like you know TOA just shits out like fifty torsal seeds and a drop if you do like a five hundred or something. Dude, you know that's and, a like, thing because nobody was asking for that. Nobody was asking for blue dehyde scales. Dude, which one of them is going for it? I need to know. Yeah, it's one of the J mods definitely is. The scales aren't noted, are they? Are they? They're like uh, they the, are noted. The you break, they are. You break them open, and they're fifty noted. But, oh, like, that's what? fucking busted. I know. Yeah, it's, you are yeah. fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like, who the fuck made this? I mean, I'm I'm not complaining, but it's very clear. So, there's some shady shit going. on. <laughs> where somebody's like, I need blue scales bad. I'm down bad with them. I mean, yeah. we know there's some shady shit going on. We got Stella sending feet picks to Trident or whatever, like mid-tier feet picks, and it's enough to get him to ban <laughs> like the entire DMing scene. Uh, something's going on. The, the, yeah. <laughs> Here, I'm actually going to just show it on my uh, on the video segment of me opening one of those blue scaly hides. I think I have one, right? What are they even called? Scaly? Bro, I don't know. I like half read the update and then I like read the other half like on stream yesterday and I saw like <laughs> Dude, so, this, bro. this thing is so private server. You literally put okay, so listen. You you grab the scaly blue hide. They don't stack. Um, but you, you grab the scaly blue hide and you grab a knife and just instantaneously just turns into fifty noted blue dragon scales. What the fuck is going on with this game right now? Dude, they oh, added cool. another audio indicator for Hyunleaf. Like, it already had one, and they had to add another one that goes on for, like, seconds before the other indicator that tells you when it's switching. I'm just like, why? <laughs> what happens, like, when Corrupted Gauntlet came out when there just was no audio or visual indicator or nothing? Like, you just had to count to four, and then no one did the content. They made that one change, and now it's, like, on every Iron Man's, like, you know, checklist of things to do. I mean, we, all, we were all using an audio cue anyway, perps, fucking voice. <laughs> I wasn't using that. I was using wanted, that. Like I, random shit going in my ear. I just remember like those <laughs> when you when you run into Hunliff and you forget to click the start perp voice and then you're trying to like <laughs> time it back up with it later. Such a yeah, fucking chore. Yeah, you get stomped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good times. To be honest, I actually enjoy one? those updates where they make things actually playable. Like the Hydra making a little animation. Like just fucking do that, please. I yeah, I don't care about sidestepping counting mechanics. That shit's boring. Yeah. All right. You want to hear some wild crap? So they did that thing for Demonic Gorillas too. Oh, yeah. Apparently what they're there? like. Apparently they're gonna count as like different NPCs or whatever. So you can like add radius markers to them, like you can with like next to find out her range during different phases and shit. So you can just like recolor it. So like when it's meleeing, it'll be colored red, and when it's ranging, <laughs> it'll be colored green. So it's basically like cheat client, but with more steps now. Oh, no. Everyone, nice. had a problem with it. Everyone had a problem with it when it wasn't allowed, but now it's allowed. I was like, oh, yeah, this is fine. Yeah. It wasn't but uh, I, I wasn't against it morally. It just wasn't on the client. That's why I had an issue with it. That is a pure representation of just this game is becoming easy escape. There literally was a time where they banned outright the use of being able to do demonics easier with plugins and stuff. They just banned it. And now yeah, they just sort of like revert that ban without actually talking about anything. They're like, yeah, we'll just allow you to do this now. Which, on it, again, it's like I don't really have a problem with it. But it's very clear to see that this game clearly is getting devalued like pretty hard. And people, 
the integrity and the old schoolness of it is not there anymore. Again, do I have a problem with it? Not really. I stopped caring ages ago, and now it's just like, I. It just makes things like so much nicer. It's like, oh yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's funny. You just laugh at everything now. Yeah. Like the whole like Urzik Helm thing being obtainable without a top or Inferno Casey. I'm like, yo, that fucking rules. That's hysterical. <laughs> it is pretty funny. Yeah. Did you guys see the sailing navigation preview? I, I'm not reading that. I read, no, not I, I not not the not the whole blog. Point. Just saw the little video of him, just like how it works. Uh, I didn't watch the video. I just like read the thing they posted on Twitter. Okay, because you can walk around on your boat, but you can also click on the water and your boat moves to that spot. All right, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I don't care for this new skill. If I can't buy it off the Grand Exchange like Herbler, I'm not trading it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> dude. I'm not gonna lie. So I try to be fully honest. I was very much team sailing when the three were proposed. I kind of like switched my mind a little bit here and there, but shamanism was not what I was looking for. <clears throat> yeah, no. I was looking I for that. I think would have broken the game and brought it to ruin faster. I was hoping that one won. <laughs> yeah, it was too many untradeables for me. I was, I was exactly. not about that. But, um, like, I, I, there's some, and it's the same thing with ruinous powers. The idea of these kind of things always sounds really cool in my head, and then I actually start seeing it, you know, being beta tested or showing like what it actually is going to look like in the game, and then I start getting scared. I literally yeah. start getting scared for the fucking game. I'm just like, holy shit. Like, there's going to literally be a new prayer book that is just like, you're never going to log into the, the classic standard prayer book that we know and love for the past 23 years. And this new sailing skill, it's going to turn the game into Toontown. You're just fucking sailing places. Ooh, and, I'm liking that name, Toontown. <laughs> <laughs> You guys ever play Toontown, by the way? Holy shit. No, but I remember seeing commercials for that shit all the time. That was for like yeah, the rich kids it. because there was no free to play Toontown. It was like you had to fucking get your parents' credit card information day one. So it, it just felt like a rich kids game back when I was a kid. Yeah, if the game wasn't free, I wasn't fucking playing it. Yeah. Certainly not on PC. Yeah, I got like a, I think I got like a 15 day trial or something like that when i was a kid or maybe it was just a seven day trial but i had to get my parents to type it in and i said i would just cancel it immediately you know because then they wouldn't be charged but i just remember <laughs> roaming around toontown just yeah whenever i see new graphical updates in osrs now i just instantly think of toontown because it's just, there's just something about them redesigning the way old school looks especially with like the elves update years and years ago do not just... get me started on that <laughs> Bro, i'm so mad about fucking shades of morton that shit was no, I'm so pissed about jank that and too. ugly and i loved it yeah yeah you're right you're right they and they they put them toontown fucking flames in there too I know. Like, that was the icing on the cake i know and they do it with everything and yeah the fucking isle of souls trees <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna that's lie. Literally I'm stealing the hell out of this. I, th I love this phrase already. It's grown on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is entering my vernacular for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all mine now. Uh, yeah, those fucking Toontown trees, though. Those they're they're Fortnite trees. Actually, that's what I consider. Them. Yeah, just, true. Like, there's no texture to it whatsoever. It's just a fucking big blob of green. There you go. All right. So you know what I miss is like really, really like old 2005, 2006 graphics of RuneScape. And there's like a few places where there's doors that still have that exact texture. Yes. Like Fenkin yeah. Strange Castle, the shed in the back still has that door. And the, Fisher's, the, the Fisher, Fisher realm actually has two yeah. different. Mm -hmm. It's like they were trying to update it into Toontown. And then they just fucking gave up halfway through the building. <laughs> because yep. there's two Hazel different Mule. variants. Uh, Hazelmere store as well. There's a, there's a few good doors out there. Yeah. I love There's those something doors. Something that West Arty too. In fact, actually, one of my favorite bugs in like West Arty. I don't even know if it's a bug. Maybe it's just an oversight that never got fixed. But there's like a there's like a ghetto house that has like the walls broken. And if you open the door, it, there's just a tree blocking the door <laughs> of the house, just <laughs> sitting there. That's actually. Hang that's on, I gotta class. go find this. That, that is that is old school, man. That is fucking yeah, old school. On, I'm gonna go run over there real quick. See, they so. Years ago, they came out with a graphical update that reverted 
what the rocks look like around the game because yeah. when old school first came out they were the whole new like 2008 models or something and maybe it was just like late 2007 models i guess mm -hmm. and then they reverted it and i was like that is an amazing change yeah i remember watching the uh like the q a that week and uh they like went down to the blurite rocks and everybody just fucking pogged it was sick i was so stoked to see yeah. those rocks coming back and I wish they would do more of that. I don't actually think people would care as much now because we have so many zoomers in the game. Like, I don't think we would get pogs if they reverted things because I feel like people would have by now forgotten that that's even like an old school. I want to plug in that like changes the models of like lesser demons and dragons and hellhounds as like their old models if you like click on it. I see, want that. Uh, see, I didn't. I didn't play back before two thousand four. I started summer of two thousand four. So anything that's prior to that actually is just really strange to me. <laughs> no, those those graphics were around during that time. You played summer two thousand four. Those types of things were around until I think mid to late two thousand six. I want to say the like, the, like really giants old school dragons. demons. Really? Yeah. Well, I know yeah, the current demons we have weren't the ones that were in that game but i've seen like super ancient models where i'm like holy fuck i don't know if i've ever seen this before mm -hmm. but, but maybe my brain was just so underdeveloped back then not not underdeveloped for my age but just you know i, I was just a brainlet back then i didn't know how to train okay. skills and stuff okay, so. I've, I've put something up live this is the door i'm talking about so this is in west Arty, like one of the uh the sh broken down shacks you open up the door and there's just a tree here. Not only that, like the door somehow phases through the tree to open it. Like, I hope they never change this. It's been like this for years. Yeah, that's I really good stuff. Here, wait, stay, stay oh. there. My my thing just glitched a little bit. I forgot there's like door spamming there. mechanics because of dead men. So like, I have to wait before I open the door again. <laughs> Actually, wait, I'll just hop worlds. Hold up. <laughs> the worst part is is it's a it's a um, new school door with an old yep. school tree. All right, so okay, here's the tree in a fence. Here's the door. You open it, and it somehow swings <laughs> through the tree. It's more pointless video game information, but I, I love stuff like this. Oh, my God, dude. That is good. That is... <laughs> There's just fucking rats everywhere. Oh, my yeah, God. See, I missed... That rat. I like that building texture, and I like... if So if you go to Fisher Realm, there is... Um, one of the doors there is so thick. It's like the thickness of two old school doors. Are you going to yeah. go there? Uh, yeah, let me grab a drumming. Okay. I think I have that done. Oh, nice. The roller tile. <laughs> still need to... See, that, yeah. that, that, would be a, style too. that would be a really terrifying thing of starting a new account. It's just yeah. trying to relearn how to fucking play mid and early game, like using Draymond stabs and stuff. Like it's just been, it's been half uh -huh. a decade since I've had to use that shit. Dude, I remember the day they changed the model of the Draymon staff. I already had Lumberge Elite done, so I wasn't using it anymore. And I like saw people equipping it, and like I saw it in people's inventory. I'm like, what the fuck is that thing? And I found out it's Draymond staff. I'm like, what the hell? When did they change the model of this thing? Because it just used to look like a wooden staff. You can buy it yeah. from that store for like 100 gold or whatever the hell. Uh, Good times. I haven't traveled there. Was it BJQ? No, BJR. BJR. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Go up to the castle and... Uh... Check that fucking girth of that door up there. It's like uh, on the second floor, I think. See, this oh, yeah, is what I, I mean. Like they that. they've updated part of the castle. As you see, the entrance doors are just that new school vibe. It's like new new school, but it's like 2007. I, like, see, era, I don't like, like it. the time when they changed the uh, the models of like the demons and stuff. Like it's it's fine, but it's not optimal. Yeah, that. That, that's I love this. Yeah. I love this kind <laughs> of fucking door. Look at that thickness, dude. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's a thick <laughs> ass fucking door. <laughs> With like eight C's. And, and the, the oh, door right next to it is new school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just refuse to update that one. Oh my god. Yeah, that's some good shit. Right, there's another one as well. This is like one of my favorites that exists. Like back here. Okay. So like see. you see like the old thing it's like Mortania like spooky doors and everything. <laughs> yeah, spooky doors. Ooh. Yeah. And look, new school ish doors, so that same art style. Yeah. But then there's just like you can see like the top of it like peeking out from behind the <laughs> shed right here. It's like oh, here. Yeah. Oh, I oh, guess they that's all, the same door. Oh, yeah, they the all are like locked. double thick fucking. We haven't just... done the quest yet. Oh. <laughs> Creature. Is it, was it under C or is it under F? Uh, no, I guess I haven't done it yet. Okay. Okay. I, just, on my list I love too. that door. Like that door 
makes me happy when I see that. And you zoom in, you could see the individual pixels and all that. Like that is true old school right there. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Some real good stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. It was like I, I hate like all this new school stuff. As I hold my third age staff, my or like whatever the hell, Tumek and yeah. Shadow, imbued Zamorak cape, mole slippers. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't mind yeah. like new things. I just don't like it when old things change. Personally. Yeah, that that's like, the problem. Yeah, fucking sick. Yeah, that's two way loot room. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know artwork like that is cool, but like replacing old artwork with like updated, like no, leave that please. Yeah, that's yeah. like. Yeah. And like. honestly, I wish they would just when they make a new place, like just keep those old models. That's what's charming about this game is like mm -hmm. yeah. making it look really old school. I do appreciate all that they've done to Shazian, the Shazian rework. Obviously, it looks more new school, but it still has that old school vibe to it. I think they did it really well. I'm not it's gonna still lie. Impossible to navigate though. Yeah, it's I'm, a I hate the new one because I have no idea where I'm going. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. You get lost really quickly. There is a lot going on there, and there's no content. <laughs> like there's there's nothing to actually do there, but it's just massive. Just for... yeah, but there's boards now. <laughs> True. <laughs> the hell yeah, dude! Like nine nine strength on board. Wait, how come nobody's made a YouTube series on that? Like getting nine nine strength through only boars. <laughs> Over the course of like, I spent two months at Boars, and if only uh, if only Verf rolled that chunk as a starting chunk instead, dude. Verf Honestly. is still in chunk one. What a goddamn fucking machine! Oh, he picked the one that had Skatizo with like the fucking everything there, and he's trying to actually green log it now because of the update, right? Yeah, yeah. He's just doomed. What is he still yeah. missing? Jar and a full totem, I believe. Still the full totem? I think yeah. he Holy got the shit. totem. I don't. I don't remember. I haven't watched in a while. I don't yeah, really I'm watch not, YouTube but anymore. He's, but, he, but he doesn't have the jar yet. That's for sure. Yeah. No, okay. he doesn't have the jar yet. Yeah. His series is his bank. When you go to his video and you just look at his bank, it's actually pretty impressive. It looks awesome. I think. I yeah, love those chunk banks. Yeah. Some of the chunks are really good. You know, Limport chunk. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Limpwort's bank. Whenever I, whenever he opens it, and I see all that shit in there. I actually get a little smile because it's all these like really old school stacks, just massive stacks of random shit. Yup. And it's just cool to see that, like, just the sheer amount of hours that were put into getting all this. Yeah, Limpwort, Limp, Limpwort series, and uh, I. Verf, I'm excited for him to get out of that chunk one because he's just gonna flourish after that. As soon as because he, he's his account's already incredibly built. Mm -hmm. I remember asking him like what would happen like after he finishes chunk one. He's like, I'd probably roll into like the mining spot by the docks and have to get 99 mining and hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a small grind though in comparison. I feel like. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. compared to killing like two billion hill giants. Yeah. Yeah. That is nuts, is by the way. Like, legitimately over half a million hill giants. Yo. And, and this is not max gear, either. This is, like, some shit. No prayer. Like, just sitting there. I don't know. If that's... that's. I mean, to be honest, max gear versus his gear is not that big of a difference. They only have 35 HP, but still. Yeah. Priest robes and Seracnus cudgel actually just looking like a gold farmer. Literally. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, did you guys ever watch Rendy's new series, his defense saga, where he got yeah. like a visage on his no, I think it what it's like no strength and no yeah, attack. Yeah, it's literally just defense. It's just defense, okay. Yeah, no prayer and no mage, no range either. And he has a fucking DFS. I think that's so cool. That's been yeah, ruined. That's a... I have been what spoiled. Time? And I'm big sad now. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, but I'm no longer going to press the like button on his videos. And if he is sad about that, he can blame you too. <laughs> Damn. To be fair, I was also spoiled on it because I joined his fucking stream. He was uh, trying to like kill Barrows Brothers, and he just had the DFS on. I was like, the fuck, dude. Yeah, that's a that's a cool <laughs> account. Like those trophy accounts. <clears throat> Yeah, imagine doing something really masochistic, like getting a a champion's cape or something on, on an account like that. No attack, no strength, no range. 
<laughs> Just kidding. Please like, don't give that guy on Twitter a shout out. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? This fuck it, you literally just talked about like a tr like a trophy account that gets a championscape. That's literally the, like the <laughs> championscape guy that blocked everybody on Twitter because they liked a mod ash tweet. Oh my god, that's the same guy. That, that's a fucking throwback. Holy shit! Good times. We we have good times on the bird app. Dude, what <laughs> amazes me is that app is free. Yeah, I know. Well. Arguably. Uh, okay. It's not free yeah. if you're stupid. Yeah, if you, if you have a brain, it's pretty free. Okay, so let me ask you. Um, are we living in the best era of Twitter? Or was there a previous best era? Of old school mm. Twitter, I should say. Yeah, probably not. I think like 17 to 2020 was like best era of Twitter from what I, uh, what I gather. Yeah, that sounds about right. The one where uh, where Arland like ripped on that uh that mid tier porn star. Oh, that was fucking <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that, that oh, era right classic. there. Dude, yeah. I I just love seeing his. You just go through his pro. I, I I swear, like he, you should only have one pin tweet, but I swear I've seen like multiple pin tweets from him. I think he just switches it up because whenever I click on his profile, there's a different pin tweet that just popped off like years ago, and yeah. it, it's fucking gold. I love it. Dude, that one like recirculates every so often. I see it just get reposted. It's like a meme or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good. He's been on Twitter forever. See, I'm kind of like still, I, I still consider myself new to Twitter, even though I joined in fucking 2019. Um, but yeah, seeing all like that old drama and stuff, seeing stuff get retweeted from like 2018 and prior is, is always awesome. I wish, I just wish I had played old school on release. Not that, not for the reason like to just w have wasted more of my life, but just for the sake of being there for all of the old school shit and drama. I, I feel like yeah, I know a lot of it, but I wasn't actually there for it. All right, so yeah. you want to know probably like one of my fondest memories of uh of like old school RuneScape release, like twenty thirteen. What? Time? So this is like maybe like a month or so after the after release. Like Varaquest is a very popular like trading post for people to like you know spam stuff with auto chat and whatever. Mm -hmm. And one of my buddies, Matt, which he might be listening at some point, he pops in my streams once in a while. He's a good IRL buddy of mine. Uh, he's like, yo, you want to like screw around and do something fun for an hour? I'm like, what? He's like, it's called the needle challenge. You start with nothing but a needle in your inventory, and you have to like flip that and at the end of the hour whoever has the most gp in their inventory wins Damn. so it, like starts off you try to sell the needle for like a thousand you buy something off somebody like you buy like lobsters off somebody else and you try to flip them for more and just like do that for like an hour straight and just build your bank like from literally a needle it was actually like kind of fun to do but like that stuff would like never work nowadays you ne would not be able to do anything even close to that really yep See, like, I, no one's gonna be a trading post like that. No one's gonna buy a needle off you for one k. The hell? Yeah, if you don't no, think you, you're like a scam bot. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, if you're doing something like that, you have to like make it known that you're doing like a trading. You have to like thing stream it, basically. And, yeah, and, and tell them <laughs> and that you're doing, cheating that, you're at doing that a point. video and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's just it doesn't have the same charm. Yeah. yeah, that was also there in the era of unidentified herbs, and if you didn't know the trick of like. Filling your inventory aside from like the good on identified, so you get scammed and keep given like guams and shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, this is like a different time, dude. It, it was a different time, and on top of that, I really actually miss the old, just the old school vibe of this game where it was literally a bunch of fucking nerds. And the reason we all started playing this initially was really for. It felt like it was for XP. I felt like that was like the core of this game was like flexing a 99 or something. You know, there was no PVM. There was no raids. There was no being good at PVM, really. And you just had that old school vibe of just people fucking around, doing bank sales, just oh, dude, chilling. Bank sales. bank sales were so good. Though That was a dopamine hit. You would just, you're, you're a total noob trading a dude that's 50 combat levels higher than you, and he shows up his fucking Santa hat, his trimmed rune armor, all his fucking glorious shit he has, and you know you can't buy any of it, but at least you're looking at it, and you're like, damn, like, that's fucking awesome. Maybe, maybe there's a chance he'll give me something for free, you know, if I beg. No. <laughs> 
I was actually talking to Mason about this kind of thing last night, uh, E-Virgin. I think we just miss the feeling of, like, being clueless. I do. Yeah. I in do this game. That. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, you're... It, we, But we only see the good part of it. Because deep down, we were like, fuck, like, how do you... How do we get that? Like, how do I get that? How do I get better at this? You know, how do I... In the moment, you don't appreciate it. It's only after the fact. That's when you really appreciate the clue, cluelessness. I want to go back to like 2005 when I was killing Chaos Druids in the Edgeville dungeon with a dragon battle axe as my main hand because I could hit 20s with it. Oh, sick. I want to go back to that. Like, I genuinely did that and I vividly remember doing that in my buddy Mike's house. <laughs> Dude, you know where I used to train? Let's hear I, used it. To, Let's... I used to I used to train um, south of Aubrey's Rune Store in Varrock, and I used to kill the level sixteen thief. <laughs> that's oh, literally that's, that's, that's literally the guy old. I would kill. <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy I would kill. Up the streets. <laughs> yeah. God, the fucking rules. That is literally the guy I used to kill over and over, and I I remember getting to like fifty strength, and I think my combat was around like. 68 or something and i was like i'm a fucking g at this like i because i had remembered i felt like i camped at combat level 30 ish for so long and i just never got around to just training my stats so i officially decided i was like you know what i'm gonna just start killing shit and getting my combat up and i remember seeing people that were level 40s and 50s and 60s i'm like you guys are gods and i remember getting up to like combat level 68 or something and i just i was like i did it I'm a fucking PBM champion. Like, I'm a god at this game now. And then, of course, the higher you get, then you start looking at the real Giga Chads that are, like, level 100, and you're like, oh, my God. I'll yep. never get there. I never did get there either. Yep, still a fucking noob. Yeah. And when I played, when I started old school, I started in uh, mid-2015, around, like, September-ish. And it yeah. the most depressing sight for me, because I was, keep in mind, like it was eight years of me not playing. So I still had that noob mindset and logging oh, yeah. in and just seeing people that were all level like 120 with no Slayer and then realizing that it was all botted through Nightmare Zone. Like seeing those accounts everywhere literally was the most depressing thing for me ever. Because it was <laughs> so cool to actually see an account that had trained for years getting up to like post level 100 combat back in like my childhood and just seeing that all gone because of some fucking stupid nightmare zone update made me sick it's not even that it's on top of like we've also just gotten older we've gotten smarter well maybe not that one but like we've gotten more efficient at like certain things we view things differently like we view games as like a goal-oriented thing rather than like something just to do for fun yeah. in a lot of cases and old school is definitely a big example of that yeah, yeah, that's I miss true. Looking, I miss looking at people in Barrow's armor and thinking, "Holy shit, he's a beast!" Instead of thinking, "Holy shit, he's a beast." <laughs> you know, just the tone has changed. Uh, yeah, I I remember I seeing Abyssal Whips and people with their white cavaliers and their dragon chains, and I'm like, "Dude, Abyssal Whip is the coolest fucking thing in this entire game. Like, so cool." It's a shame that Abyssal Whips now are just shit. Just yeah. Like, total, total shit. Because that was just... That, that was like the old school. When people say, and I've talked about this here and there, like the idea of an old school, old school, that just... You, you still have the quality of life. This, this is my opinion on an old school, old school. And I know a lot of people wouldn't play it. I would play it personally. But it would be the idea of you still get the plugins, you still basically because there's going to be no way around it you're not going to be able to ban plugins so give old school exactly what it was on release of old school all that content with all the quality of life and all the bug fixes and continued support but no content updates so you're just so you're yeah, like off kings. yeah so you're just constantly living in the realm of old school 2007 you still get support if there's game breaking bugs it'll be fixed you'll ban cheaters all that bullshit but you'll just you there's a promise that there will never be any content updates there can be quality of life updates and there can still be plugin updates and stuff but just the content itself will never change they did that it was called fresh start worlds and it flopped 
Well, that's because it ends at some point and you just get transferred over. What they need is a game that's never going to get fucking transferred over. Just like, this is it. This is the fresh economy. And it wasn't also because Fresh Start Worlds had all the content. Yeah, that's true. Have today, so. But it was like fresh economy and everything. And I think that's like what one thing that like people would really care about and like starting over. Yeah. It's like there's no like supplies anywhere. Like foraging yeah. dragon bones is actually a huge moneymaker for the first mm-hmm. couple of weeks and stuff like that. I just think it would be fun to have the classic version of it where there is not all the updates and there's no grand exchange and there's no it's just like you you log in and you really feel that holy shit this is a different game entirely but it's still old school and you just understand that you're not going to get all those zoomers playing it because they're all going to be like yeah this is stupid and to be honest it will be stupid after a few months but i'll be one of those nerds that continues to play it i'd probably just farm hard clues because that's the that's the top tier of clues and I would just uh-huh. try to like collect third age and shit. Because there's no Iron Man either. So everyone's just a main account. Yeah, I imagine you can probably only get one fucking clue at a time as well. Well, yeah, you can only get one clue at a time still oh, right yeah. now. See, that... No, I mean, like, you could only have, like, one clue at a time, regardless of tier, wasn't that case Yeah, originally? I think that was the case. Yeah. Was it? Maybe. I'm pretty it, sure, That yeah. sounds right. I'm not positive, but, but that would be, that would be something where I would be okay with them reverting it. It's the same thing with unidentified herbs. Like, give just it's like the content would never change, but give us the quality of life that we enjoy. Let us turn our game with the fucking mouse wheel. Let us hold Come multiple make clues. You know, like sh- yeah, exactly. Shit like that would be. Yeah, all I, I, I wouldn't want make make X in a uh, old school, old school. I miss fucking spamming my keyboard and shit and, like, right-clicking. It was sick. <laughs> you say that for now, but the only reason, like, RuneScape Classic was held afloat is because people, like, literally everybody bottled it. Like, the way you trade yeah, skills back yeah. then is, like, if you wanted to chop a tree, you had to click for every individual log. If you wanted to cook <laughs> something, you had to use every single one on the fire individually, yeah. etc. Yeah. Like, yeah. nobody wanted to do that shit. Nobody had time for that shit. Yeah, they would have to fix all that. So, like, mechanics... And things would work as they do currently, but just the content. That's that's the main gist. Of course, there'd be little things here and there that we'd have to decide whether or not it's appropriate to change. But content alone, that would never change. I think that'd be cool. There would also be some, like, rune light trading post, probably. I don't think they'd ever bring back Zybez. I don't think Zybez would ever be a thing again. But they'd have, like, some rune light overlay thing that tells you who's trading what and shit. Oh, so I mean, this is kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, but I'm also like Grizzle Boomer again, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I never really used it. Oh, I don't know. I As a kid, I just assumed every RuneScape is affiliate, like associated website it was just like a scam site. So <laughs> I, I just went one around one time and just thought it. Thought no, it. I never even got scammed. That's the thing. Really? I just played it far too safe. Yeah. You never got scammed in, in RuneScape? Never got scammed, yeah. So you were the scammer. That's why you knew what no, was scams I, or not, because you had that mindset. No, I, I wasn't a scammer either. I was just How did you never cool get with... scammed? What? I don't know. I just, I just didn't give people my shit. <laughs> yeah, not hard. <laughs> yeah, so, but, but, you're, shit, but you're a child. Naked. Like I can understand a cold one because he's literally like forty years old. So he was, shut up. He, he was the scammer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he understood he could take advantage of a bunch of seven-year-olds when he's like twenty. Oh. <laughs> basically, just. I mean, I didn't start playing this game until I was like, I think I made my first account when I was twelve. Yeah, it was twelve or thirteen. That's like when I first started playing the game. But yeah, like, yeah I, I'm I'm maybe like forty years old. But we won't get into that. Who is the oldest streamer? Is it Foe or you? Foe, I think, is younger than me by like six months or something. I think. I might be wrong on that. I, I have to think, like, are there any like streamers that are actually older than me in the old school Rootscape section? I feel like there's at least two of them. Or, like, two consistent ones, rather. That yeah. are older than me, but like, not by too far. Hmm. Well, I know there's... Uh... What's his name? Low but or Mod Matt K. First of all, he's the he's the okay, oldest. Yeah. He's not a, he's not a streamer. He's an XJ mod. There's a difference. <laughs> yeah, fair. I need a I need to get him on the cast. I still haven't asked him to come on. He's oh, that'd be jokes. Yeah, people. I mean, yeah. The, the replies to the tweet would literally just be the fucking video of him dropping iron ore. 
<laughs> dude there are some really good ones of that that's been passed around everywhere. oh yeah yeah i just love it's the ending i just love the ending where he calls the dude a dick fuck <laughs> like, yeah it's always at the very end and you're like what <laughs> when i first heard that i did like a triple take i was like what did you just say <laughs> oh my god yeah, a little bit of technique to it <laughs> Uh, everyone I see online right now, uh, at least from everyone I see live on Twitch right now in the directory, I'm older than all of them. So, I don't know, maybe I am the oldest one. And you're how old? Uh, I turned 34 in September. Okay. okay and yeah. those words just left my mouth, and uh, I'm having a midlife crisis now. Thanks. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, I'm, I'm turning 28 in a couple weeks, which... Yeah, I'm turning 28 in a couple of months. Yeah, it's brutal. A bunch of babies... Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I. I've given up being fucking worried about it. I don't know. I'm just gonna continue to get older, and life will continue to go faster, and I will continue <laughs> to play this silly little <laughs> clicking game. Oh yeah, we all will. Yeah, it never ends. No, I mean seriously, when does it end? Because I don't think it does. I mean, it definitely ends. I don't know. I feel like most people that have lived have like died at this point. No, I mean, <laughs> not that. I mean, you're playing RuneScape. <laughs> Just, yeah, I don't know. Do you, do you ever stop? Because we're the first generation with the game, so. Oh, I think it. Uh, it's like too big to like falter at this point, unless they make like a huge mistake. I think it's just going to stick around until the company liquidates, maybe. But I don't know. It's gonna it's gonna die with our generation, because no kids are playing old school. Yeah, it'll it'll die when it's no longer profitable. Yeah, so our generation, whenever we start dying off, that's when the that's when they'll start liquidating. Yeah. yeah. Someone will run some private servers or something. Yeah, but who's playing it if our generation's gone and dead? Uh, the last few people that aren't dead. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But then the last few yeah. people that die. <laughs> the game's just over. Yeah. I don't know. I maybe... just I decided to just not think about that. Just think in the now, live in the now, yeah. worry less about the future. Because if you can't control it, why are you worrying about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seems Amen, kind of pointless. Brother. And you know what I'm focused on right now is putting these carambons on this fire and getting some sweet, <laughs> sweet cooking experience. <laughs> That's a good shit right cooking. there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whale fucking cooking. Let him cook. Actually, I, I wanted to talk about that for a while. Because, like... Like I found out, like whale, like a while ago, like you know, wasn't a cooking job, and I was in a couple of cooking jobs while I was like in uni and everything, and uh, like taco night at like in base Tennessee, like we did some of that together. The man like you know dice up some uh, some lettuce and tomatoes, some cilantro cabbage. and shit. Those tacos slap. Was it, by okay, the way. so serious question: starving. Was it actually cabbage? Because it said yeah, fucking no, it lettuce was... at the. It was Bro, legitimately. It said lettuce at the cabbage. grocery store. If that was yeah. actually cabbage, I'm furious. Yeah, no, it was cabbage. All right, whatever. Yeah, that was I straight didn't have it on my tacos, so like, all right. Yeah. Everybody enjoyed them, so it was, yeah. Dude, that, that's all that matters. That night, I was so hungry. I just remember going there and just snarfing down like four tacos instantaneously. And then I oh, saw yeah. that there was an unopened box of Krispy Kreme donuts. And I'm yeah. like, I don't even <laughs> care who the fuck these are. Like, I'm literally taking like four donuts right now. Yeah, I'm I pretty sure you brought, brought those over. over. Yeah. yeah. Who did? Yeah, GM, white juicy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was the one that brought him. Yeah, he he came through with the clutch real yeah, quick. That, with them dude, there's something about that Krispy Kreme when you're just craving. Oh yeah, something. I ate like fucking like three of those bitches at like four in the morning that night. Oh, they're so good. I won. Yeah. I won. Uh, one but when one bit one that doesn't sound right. I won bit one on uh on Prison Joe's stream. It's supposed to be for one a five pack, donut. but nobody was fucking gifting so. They might have gifted after. Yeah. They might have. I don't know. He's got a pretty cool community. Uh, I was just saying, like, we had, like, the whole prep thing. We had to, like, delay it, like, a couple of times. So I just, like, took all the meat. Like, like I pre-prepped and put it, like, back in the fridge. Like, okay, stop chopping. I guess we're not doing this yet. But, like, everything, like, just went out, like, a kitchen line, like, type thing. I remember mm -hmm. Noble was, like, saying, like, when we were picking all it up, was like, you sure, like, you know, about this, we're going to have so many leftovers. And then, like, the next morning, there was just, like, nothing left at all. Like, everyone ate everything. It was yeah, like, yeah, le funny. yeah, right. <laughs> the leftovers is a funny joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, is Was there anybody at the base, Tennessee, or just anybody that you've met up with in previous events, either that you 
knew them online and then they were different in person or like you didn't expect them to be what they were in person um yeah gnoble's not really that horny what's up with that <laughs> yeah i was expecting him to be a lot hornier <laughs> I yeah, like you, you didn't even try to like, fuck me. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, why'd you buy those condoms? I know. I don't know. I'll do like, bro, I, I took those shits through TSA. You didn't even <laughs> fuck me. What the hell? Ignoble, I made you a feet pick calendar. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> oh, my. Mm. Oh yeah, my. Ignoble was surprisingly chill. Yeah, he's just like a normal dude. Yeah, I don't know. just a normal dude. I love that, like, but you could you could still see how he could get goofy and horny and shit, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. I, I feel like everybody's virtually themselves. So. I I thought Nine Rain was get Nine Rain the type. Now, uh, I thought Nine Rain was gonna be taller than he was. <laughs> because yeah. I arrived at the tennis or the national airport, and that's where Saint Tits and his girlfriend and uh, Nine Rain showed up. And I just expected Nine Rain to be like six foot two. I don't know. He just, it, believe it or not, he kind of gave those like six foot one, six foot two vibes. And then he's literally my yeah. height. I'm like, oh, you're just, you know, five foot 11. Just the little. one that threw me off the most was fucking Eliop. He's like an entire head taller than me. I was like, bro, oh, you're yeah. a fucking hill giant. How? Dude, Eliop <laughs> is massive. Yeah, he's yeah. so tall. It, it, that dude it is a very pain. rare that I have to look up at somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're what, Well, Six foot four? Six foot three? Six three, six four, somewhere in there, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was surprising because I always thought you were around, I don't know, maybe just six foot. Yeah, I thought I was too. But and then I met up with everybody. <laughs> and then you, and like, and then you tasty, meet up with people and you're like, oh shit, I'm taller. Yeah, Tasty claims six two and then I'm tasty taller than him. Is, I'm like, tasty claims he's like six two and three quarters. Bitch, no, he's not. He's literally like, nah, he's like six four. No, he's like six foot half an inch. <laughs> that's no, a, he's, he's, a little, he's a little taller than me, and I'm six two. No, yeah, that, we're definitely like similar in height. Yeah. So I don't know if if he if Tasty's six foot two and three quarters, I'm six foot one. That's all I'm saying. Now, nah, to be honest, he, he's got like a, a solid a solid two and a half inches over me, but that would still mean I'm six foot. So, but yeah, yeah that's, that's what I've boring. realized after with the after the meetup is just fucking claim you're like three inches taller than you actually are nobody will fucking bother you about it <laughs> yeah, something i always liked about the meetups like everyone you meet or everyone we've met like uh I like these base meetups is exactly how they are online pretty much yep. like no one's yeah. putting up a facade or anything no one's like putting on an act like you know. you know exactly like what you're getting into i know it's it's strange how that that works out I don't yeah. think it's that strange. I think it's like fairly normal because like it, it's not like we're a group of people that are like you know in their late teens, early twenties. I feel like that like group of uh, like yeah. I guess content creators, influencers. Like there's always That's a lot true. of drama surrounding it, and like That's always true. like this stuff like that. But like we're older, we ain't get time for that shit. We're just we're older, and it's, shit. we have we started streaming because of our love for the game. I feel like yes. most yeah. most people Absolutely. that are there actually loved RuneScape before they loved streaming. They didn't just start streaming like, oh, I need to understand what a video game is now to make money. <laughs> <laughs> that, by the way, is just so weird. Twitch is so big now in comparison to what it was. And it's just, you just got streamers that are just, I'm a streamer. Yeah, it's funny to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember like, uh, I don't think it's really small as much of my series, but... Like, I was doing the Chambers of Zarek task with that with 4D, and I was talking with D.O. for a while. He's, like, a big wig in the uh, in the RuneScape, like, PVM scene. Really, uh, really good guy. And we were chatting about, like, the older days of, like, Twitch when, like, it used to be just, like, flooded with, like, gamers. Like, people that were just, like, really, really good. You remember Alesson, for example? Dude, I fucking like, miss people, like, I love him. Alesson. Let's do Lane in. He used to stream. He used yep. to do, like, Dude, he used the original yeah. one plus four top learners I guy. I that guy. I vividly mm-hmm. remember one of his streams where he's like giving people instructions like, okay, you have to spec the boss twice of the Dawnbringer, and some dude double BGS specs P1 Berserk. I was <laughs> like, holy <laughs> fuck. That's the experience. <laughs> that rules. Let's do yeah, PKing yeah. people and just dude, carrying the end of Berserk every single him raid. PKing was awesome. Riven was always content. Yeah. I miss those days. Dude. But like. Th- we reminisce on that. Like it was literally just like gamers. Now it's like people showboating. Loud equals funny. 
Like yeah. any gifters, any ten packs. Yeah, and... yeah. Yeah. A, le a lesson actually stops by my stream every now and then. Not not super often, but you know, like once every yeah. few months I see a lesson in the chat. I, yeah, he like I started going on. Yeah, I started like arcane flicking it all because of him. Dude, a lesson was a guy. He was the first. I'm pretty sure he was the first person I was gifting subs to. Like in the this is way before I even started streaming. I think, I think I lost my uh, gifted sub virginity to him because oh. I, I just fucking loved being in a stream. It was just awesome, and he was he just made it so fun. Him doing solo yeah. raids, and that that was back when you could advertise no preps and it was actually yep. like, oh shit this dude's not oh, prepping <laughs> gaming <laughs> no, if you're prepping now you're literally trolling like you're just trolling yeah. you're trolling or you're like you're actually like in stage of learning and like transitioning <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that yeah 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 of course i feel like if you're streaming like either you need to like one have like a really uh really likable personality like something people find funny and entertaining Two, be really good at the game or three be a girl like that's the only way you really make it in this category like you have to meet one of those three factors that people can like cling on to yeah <laughs> i hear Seder chuckling right now to himself <laughs> don't think i don't hear that oh my god yeah just wait until i get all three you motherfuckers <laughs> Dude, you're, they, isn't that what trifecta is about? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh... yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I always love to see is a content creator that literally has not changed since day one. Yeah. Like just, and I actually consider you a cold one in that boat. I mean, you as well, Whale, but it's weird right, because man. Whale started streaming without a face cam. And you, a cold one, started streaming with a face cam, and now you both have flip flopped. Yeah, <laughs> I learned my lesson from the Joker. He said, "If you're good at something, never do it for free." And I'm good at being good looking, so I shut the camera off. Yeah, see, I don't have that problem, dude. dude shutting the camera off is literally like that. Is so I'm so jealous of people that can just where they've now grown accustomed to. There is no face cam in the stream. Cause you just fucking go live, and it doesn't matter. You should be butt ass naked. You don't need to do anything. Just go live. Dude, that's half the reason I shut it off. I can just be chilling in my box if it's like and ninety can... plus degrees, one hundred percent humidity outside, or some wild shit, and not even the AC is helping. Yeah, I can just veg out and just see. Yeah. When I go live without a face cam here and there, well, to be honest, my audience has actually been pretty good with not asking, but it. Used to be just every other comment was where's the face cam? Where's the face cam? Where's the face cam? It's like God damn it! Like you're, I can't do this because. Yeah. yeah. No, whenever I do it, I just get a whale steamroll tail first is back. <laughs> just like hell yeah, he is. Yeah. Let's go. That's cool. Yeah. No, no. To be honest, uh, I, I'm I'm in a good boat where I actually can just do like a, a no cam stream. I just can't do them too consistently because then the questions will start arising. Yeah. Um, I remember Zulu, his face oh, reveal. Yeah. yeah. All yeah, we no, had was the Zulu I pod the, for the longest time. Bro, the old Zulu streams when he didn't have face cam. I, bro, it's so long ago. Yep. Oh, yeah. I thought he would look so much different than what he actually looked like. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, he, he did not look like the fucking Zulu pod. <laughs> You know, unironically, I just got to say one thing about Zulu. I still think of him as like one of the best PVMers in the game, even though he would like won't show that now because he's more of like a personality talk to the chat kind of guy. Mm -hmm. But like, you need to remember, like the first week of Inferno release, only twelve people got the cape, and he was one of them. Yeah, I think he was That's like impressive. seven. That's impressive. Yeah, like people I remember, yeah, no, obviously, not... like Bodhi got it. Obviously, like Wooks got it. Like he got it. Bellus was another one. If you know him, like he's a PKer yeah. now. He got it first week. Wow. Yeah. So like, I don't think people are just like naturally good at the game, like even from like OG standards. Like I just think first week of Inferno release, who got it there? Well, you yeah. also have to remember, like, and and I'm not I'm not discrediting him for anything, but when you have played old school since release for twelve hours a day on average, like you're just going to have that natural sense of like, okay, I can I can do this, like I can do this new yeah. piece of content like when you d when you just have so many more hours in the game it's just like me right now i mean i don't even consider myself a great pvm -er at all but just the sheer amount of fucking hours i put into this game with any new piece of content that comes out like i don't think i would 
like struggle that hard with it, even though I don't practice PVM really. No, it's um, just we have so much knowledge of this game, and I believe you're in Summit, right, Sater? Yeah, I, I have. I literally have not been active in there for like a year, though. Neither have I, but like you understand the game in the same way that I do. Like you don't think of the game as like other people do. Yeah, you look at yeah. things differently. Like I, I don't know exactly how to like phrase this, but mm -hmm. like you can solve pretty much any problem in the game infinitely faster than the average good quote unquote PVMer out yeah. there. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> yeah, supply like showcase that you got the burn doomly rat before it got leaked. No, you're right, you're right though. Like there's I, I just. When I was more active in the summit and just looking at what people were discovering and just like GE challenge posting some crazy calculations on some shit he was doing. One of the craziest things I remember seeing on just the general summit post was there, uh, uh, what am I thinking? Not server, uh, general channel, uh, was, GE challenge doing this little test or maybe maybe it wasn't GE challenge maybe it was Pork Hazard or somebody but they were doing a test where like you would so there was there's a cow pen in Lumbridge and there's two fence openings to the cow pen and what you would do is you would click into the cow pen with one of the doors opened but then the other door was shut but then you would have an alt shut that door and open the other door and as your guy like paths over there, he just teleports after like he's after he's almost yeah, made it. I into, remember seeing this. You know, this yeah, some, some just showcase. Just some weird fucking shit. And I just remember seeing stuff like that. And like that, I just remember logging in when I, and this is when I was like super addicted also to just runescape and logging in. And I would do, make my little skilling method videos. That's when I got really obsessed with just making those hour long videos of just some random shit because logging into that discord channel and just seeing crazy shit like that was just really fascinating to me and really cool and yeah you're right it makes it it makes me look at the game differently all right it, so i got a question for you yeah. so you saw how evscape has been going for combat achievements he was doing melee inferno recently and, he and uh his blow pipe. <laughs> yeah and, and he ended up flying out even though he didn't click to fly out he clicked zuck clicked on a blowpipe and then just ran it down mid do you, you understand why that happens right Ooh, and wait, why it's sorry. that way do you Sorry, know how to recreate that situation and what causes that? Sorry, can you retell the so, scenario? I'm confused. Okay, so uh, EB escapes at like you know not exactly at the corner, like at the part part where you drag into the middle to hit Zuck again from like oh, okay. that one of those middle two like mark tiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He clicks to attack him, and before the attack goes off, he clicks something else. Like he clicks a br yeah, he like healed with a brew. Oh and yeah, so and something then you're where he'd attack mm -hmm. on the same yeah, tick. You, he. It's it's where you try to it like eat something or try to equip something else, and you've attacked on the same tick. It doesn't even have to be on the same tick in that case because he doesn't have line of sight to attack it yet. Mm. Yeah, I like I explained it to chat last night because uh, like somebody asked about the scenario. I was like, I know exactly how it works, and like Hootie tried to summarize it, but he only got it like a third of the way correct. So I like showed everybody like, okay, here's the scenario. I'm gonna attack this market guard in like already center, and I'm behind the building. So what would happen normally is I'll stop like right by the market stall and then shoot him with Tebow. While he's over there, I'm gonna eat an angler on the way there, and I'm gonna fly out into the middle of the market stall, and then not attack him. Yep. Instead, yep. and that's just what happens because the game's just stupid like that. Yeah, that, I, I like, noticed that first with like Zora, just when you're like equipping something else or doing something, your dude just dashes towards Zora into like the the um, venom clouds. Yeah, it, it's a really really weird mechanic that doesn't have any uses. It's just something stupid that happens. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most useful things for the it's useful but like the scenario would never happen hardly but like if you were caught in a freeze in the wilderness like somebody fr froze you you could use the um enchant jewelry spell and like use it on a tree or it was like some it doesn't spell work. it doesn't work anymore but yeah you yeah. could use that you, back you, in the you, day you now it doesn't just, you guys could just keep moving around frozen but <laughs> yeah that, that that was something i was trying to uh do in nightmare was Back when I was grinding Nightmare, if you get husked, you're frozen until both husks are dead. But you could do, you could like uh, use the enchant spell on the portal next to it because you could red click that. And your guy could like run out of the uh, husks little range. But you're still frozen there until the husks are dead. So you would literally like gatekeep yourself basically <laughs> because you oh, can't. Actually... You, could, you could essentially soft lock if you wanted to in a certain way. You probably could. Like it... I mean, that situation now, but yeah, there are probably some situations where you. Where you could do that, yeah. 
No, you could actually just soft lock. Well, until you die, it's, it's not like entirely soft locking, but you could just bring yeah, one yeah. Uh, one cosmic rune, do it once, and then just go to the other side of the room out of their range. And like, well, you can't hit the husks, and you can't move until the husks are dead. <laughs> That's so, true. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or just my solution: just don't do that, boss. You know? Oh my god, uh, dude! To, I love that solution. Mm -hmm. To this it's day, I, I, like the fact that I spent nine months. One tick flicking nightmare, twenty nine hundred normal solos. Yeah, like, bruh, you. Yeah. The one solo I had to do for combat achievements made me want to puke. Like the one I had to do, I was like, "How the fuck did I do this twenty nine hundred times?" And then day one of Fasani's, I get a mace. Like what? The, oh my god! Like the amount of. Awesome. I mean, obviously, I was like pumped up, but like when I thought about it later, I'm like, Jesus Christ, what a fucking troll this game is. Okay, I, I gotta talk about something since we're on the topic of Nightmare really quick. Do you remember the day of release of Nightmare? When that shit yep. first came out? Mm -hmm. And then, oh, like, yeah. the RuneScape, like, PR team or, like, influencer team or whatever the hell they are tried to do this, like, contest, like, which streamer's team will get the most items. And the only items that came into the game were pets and jars. Like, nobody got a Nightmare Unique because they forgot <laughs> to code them in or some shit. Oh, you're talking Literally, Fasani's nobody release. Got... No, I'm talking about no, regular Nightmare. nightmare. Yeah, regular Because Fasani's release, the first nightmare. eight hours had no drops. <laughs> the first oh, yeah, that too. But I'm talking about the regular one. Really? They like, also fucked up. <laughs> yes. I saw a Mace Day release. It was definitely like later, later on. Like after Yeah, it was yeah. probably after I patched it. But like it was after like, you know, the, the first eight hours of the quote unquote contest. Dude, I just remember how stupid their reasoning for making the drop rates. Day one of Normal Nightmare. People calced it. It was 6,500 hours to complete Nightmare. Hey, and? 6,500 hours just to complete all Nightmare Uniques. That's well, what you, it was you're calculated. You're out of Iron Man. Now have something to keep you busy. <laughs> and if you go dry, 13,000 hours. Just as long as it takes to get 200 mil all on a main. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the items aren't even, like, they were, I mean, obviously the harm had a lot of use at the time, but, like, it's just, like, they tried so hard to make it a lottery-style boss that it was just stupid. And I remember complaining about it. I was like, why the hell can you scale this to 80, man? And the HP all scales up, but the drops barely scale. Like, they only scale up to, like, 80% higher <laughs> or something. Because it's something fun you can do with your friends or something. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's like... You would, I think somebody calced it. Um, it was if you wanted to get a specific orb in your name in an 80 man, you had to do 96,000 80 mans to get an orb in your name. 96,000. <laughs> like, bro, what are you guys smoking? Do you do any tests? Do you do any, do you guys have any rationality in this? Like, okay, this is a little absurd. Dear God. Fucking I don't know. I like, I like those odds. Dude, f funny enough, speaking about that, hang on. I, I'll, I'll go live really quick because it's actually relevant to this. Okay. Um, literally, like, right as we're, like, talking about Nightmare and the odds of getting an orb in your name, uh, you look at my chat box right now, some, some iron just got a dupe Eldritch Orb, so sit the fuck down. Yo, let's go. Damn. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the last thing I'm missing for Nightmare. Oh, Eldritch? Yeah, just borrow one of his. It's funny how the Eldritch was literally the worst unique. And now it's the best unique there. <laughs> yep. It's totally mm -hmm. flip-flopped. And it's the one unique I never ended up getting. Now it's the most expensive. I will say, like, uh, like something I do on the main once in a while is, like, I'll, like, skip for Slayer Task, try to get Zook, try to get, like, something I want to do. And, like, one of the bosses I don't mind getting on this account is uh, is DKs. I have, like, almost 2k kill count on all of them, and I want one of their pets because it's iconically one of my favorite boss, like, setups in this game. Ever since, oh, like, yeah. old days, I've always loved DKs. And Eldritch at that place is actually just absurd. Like, it, it's just big chilling. If you're, like, trying to sit there for, like, the whole task and everything, you just Eldritch something, get, like, 30 prayer points back, and you're good for, like, that one room. That does you can, like, jump nice. back out and go into the other. And with Lightbearer now, it just, oh, it's infinite prayer yeah. points. Oh, you just yeah. bring, like, three sand fuse, you're good for the whole trip. Dude, Lightbearer has a lot of use, even with the stupid grinds I do, like jellies. I can now go and do i don't even have to venator bow jellies anymore i can just go in there with like a melee setup because i'm already 200 mil range just go there and i just have unlimited bulwarks like just basically just regather everything every you know 
minute. The days of the jellies. Oh god. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, don't bring strings. up the jellies. Come on, man. Uh, yeah. Dude, that, that was back was, when you were like you were like times. top five hard clue scroll Iron Man. At some point. Yeah. Yeah, and like most of them were being opened on Toronto with no unique other than candy. <laughs> that hurt me so much, dude. It was yeah, all for the sweets. Yeah, I, I don't care for that at all. Yeah. Never did. It hurt I me. I care for the fun of the game. And that's like one of the main reasons I DR. It's like I, I just care about like having fun and yeah. like getting better at stuff and helmets just holding me back. So we got to put that thing on the ground and step on it, spit yeah, on it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, real quick, off topic, but because of that, the spitting. Who has the best, like you know, spit sound effect? Other like the streamers that you watch on Twitch when they just go hak tui and they spit on like a few. Yeah, I think it's Jake C. Now that you, I was trying to think, I was like, who, who, who have I even heard do that? I've heard Zoe do it. I've heard Ignoble try to do it. I think, but Jake C. I think has a really good one. All right, this one uh, maybe you haven't heard it, but I think his is really good skill specs. His spit sound effect is like, oh, yeah. it sounds like he's actually just spitting on you. He probably is actually spitting. You can't actually <laughs> tell if he is. <laughs> yeah, maybe, or not. maybe that's why it sounds so good. <laughs> he probably just has a <laughs> fucking like, trash can stoked. next to Yeah. Or he literally just spits on his desk. You wouldn't, I mean, he fucking peed in a dog bowl as his girlfriend's mom was watching. <laughs> Did that's you, uh that's something i've now heard with my ears and i have to remember yeah. that now <laughs> he, cool. he, he told that story on my saving cast and then i watched his appearance on based after dark and he told it again he oh was just god. so drunk oh my god so I, I don't know i wouldn't be surprised it's not quite evie scape shitting the house but that's pretty good <laughs> he shit his whole house <laughs> yeah those, yeah, there's something about being in Australia, yeah. man. Like, just turns you into a fucking savage. I would say Australians, yeah. but Jay isn't actually Australian, but he just lives there now. All right, so all right, I don't know. Like, I'm taking over the save cast now. Now oh, it's yeah. a cold one. Exactly cast. what we need. All right, so <laughs> unhinged memories. What's like one of the most unhinged things you remember doing in your life? Like the idea of like pissing in the dog bowl, shitting the house, or something like that. And I'll give you like a an example, like uh, with one of my most like one unhinged things okay. so i was like at some house party back when i was like yeah. 20 or something like that and i showed up like an 18 pack of heineken for like a long night like showed up early at like seven or eight while we're like still setting stuff up like you know, pop one early this party's gonna be going on to like four in the morning and like i was like i tossed like a couple around for like games of beer pong and stuff like that but i drank like the majority of this thing and i like remember late at night like around two in the morning like i'm outside smoking a cigarette i'm like Kind of just like hanging out, like leaning on the wall, like very visibly wasted. And someone's like, yo, Phelps, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just holding the wall up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm like, I'm like, I, I just like, I, I didn't like someone to say like, you know, yeah, I'm wasted. I'm having a good time. I was like, no, I got to cover this up. Like, I can't let people know I'm fucked up. Like, what's something, what's the most believable thing I can think of? Holding this wall up. Sure, yeah, I'm just wall up. <laughs> going just <laughs> shitting stories in general. I just remember yeah. um, I was really sick one day, and I decided to take a laxative to like make myself, you know, feel relieved because I was just really sick, and it just felt like if I just had a, a solid shit, it would cure me almost, you know. Um, and then I decided to take NyQuil because I ended up just like the laxative wasn't working. So I just took some NyQuil and just went to sleep. And I just remember just swamp ass. I mean, I'm, I'm talking like just fucking I just shit myself so hard in bed. But I was on my stomach. So like, you know, like swamp bubbles. Like imagine oh, <laughs> just no. coming up. Oh, and, Jesus Christ. I just remember waking up from it just shitting myself and this is a laxative effect so it is just like yeah I, I i don't need to explain it but i literally had to like somehow without turning my body like take my blanket off and like get off of my bed and run into the bathroom with like yeah i don't god knows what was happening it was nighttime i mean i, I, I couldn't even fucking see but it was the most disgusting sight of all time <laughs> Everyone has now clicked off the say bake Yeah, cast. so l learning yeah. lesson for those. Never take a laxative in a sleeping pill or a sleeping, any sort of sleeping medicine, any drowsy medicine. You'll yeah. 
There was one time when I was, uh, I was about like seven. I was on vacation with my grandparents and, uh, like we were just like in an RV and I just ate an, an entire bag of cherries. And then, uh, <laughs> that night, oh, no. you know, you go, you go to the campground, you gotta use like the public <laughs> campground showers and whatnot. So I'm in there in my drawers, you know, cleaning up and all that. And I uh, go to let a little fart out and I just completely sh- Get my drawers in the shower. <laughs> I go up to my grandpa, just fucking crying. He's like, "Yeah, just fucking wash off, leave him in there. It'll be all right." He gave me a little towel and walked me back to the RV. It's the most so, yeah, traumatizing just, thing ever for you, but your grandpa just seen it all. Just like, "Yeah, you're you're fine, dude." Yeah, just fucking leave him in the shower. Someone will fucking deal with it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, your grandpa's a real one. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, he's a funny dude. Yeah, Will's grandpa. I mean, it's got you got to be a funny fucking dude. Got to be. Yeah, I like um, to think my pops was a pretty funny dude too. I don't know. Yeah the the only uh, I don't know if I told this, but um, the worst I ever had to pee was literally just this last December in Mexico. I went to Mexico, uh, and we went on a little excursion to like some random sites and stuff, and. In the we left in the morning. We had a bus. It was like a two and a half hour bus ride in Mexico, and I have just been so used to this routine of me being at home and just overly hydrating. And then in the morning, I'll take like four fucking pisses before I go live, basically. You know, and even after I've started my stream, I'll piss another like three times because I just drink a shit ton of water when I wake up. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I still have that like just whole routine down where i'll just wake up and i'll just chug like 16 ounces of water first thing and then drink more water later and i was getting like showered and all ready for this excursion anyway i just did my last minute pee and i thought that would be fine but then i was on this bus for two and a half hours and like 30 minutes into the bus ride i'm like holy shit i need to pee really bad like really badly (laughs) and i literally (laughs) and i literally held it for another two hours and bro like it was at the point where like my family's in the bus and the two um like drivers like there's the driver and then there's like the the tour guide and they're just trying to like speak to my older brother in spanish and like doing all this stuff and they're all just laughing and having a good time just talking about random shit and every time anybody spoke i was getting pissed off i was just getting fucking (laughs) furious in my mind i'm like shut the fuck up like like i had to pee so bad that any like sudden noises or any bump in the road was making me fucking just horribly angry inside and i just like was sitting there just unbearable i was sweating dude anyway we pull up to this like park and there's a restroom like i don't know like 200 meters away or something and uh i don't know why i said meters i'm fucking american but yeah uh, anyway, so I get out, dude, and I am literally wobbling. Like, I'm fucking wobbling, and my bladder is literally feels like an inferno in there. Like, it's so hot. Like, it's just like I've had to pee for two and a half hours. And I waddle in, and there's just this one, um, like, souvenir shop, and there is, like, 30 mexicans in this bathroom <laughs> waiting for like just to pee in this big like latrine thing just this thing <laughs> and i run in there and i just cut people in line and i just start taking a piss and just there's like f- like 15 other dudes right next to me and i literally pee for like three minutes straight and it was the most uncomfortable most pain i think i've ever been in in my life it was horrible i love that for you Oh my yeah. god, dude! I like, remember having like moments like that where like you've got to hold it in. Like, uh, th- this is probably like, very relatable for like a lot of listeners. Like anyone that's got to like commute like a really long way for the job, like an hour plus. Yeah. But, like a- anytime I have to, like wake up for work, I get up like stupidly early because I have to open up at like you know eight thirty, nine a.m. or whatever. So I get up hella early. I need energy really quick. I was probably up until like t- midnight or one, like game and playing Rooney or whatever. And I hop down like you know a pot of coffee or like two cups of coffee or whatever the hell. And then 10 minutes into the drive, like, I, I got to shit my pants. And <laughs> no. Yeah, the, 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 I still have, like, another probably, I want to say, like, an hour or so left on my drive or something like that. And I just got to hold it in. Because, like, if I pull over for, like, a gas station, I'm going to be late to clock in. Like, I can't be doing, I can't be risking that. Yeah, that was me on the way to fucking the cabins. 
Did you have to pee or shit really bad? Yeah, no, I had to shit. The, the food poisoning was starting to kick in at that point. Oh, yeah, when you when you got to go like that, like it's at, and you were unable to like stop for it, and you just have to hold it in. It's actually just the struggle. It is, yeah. it, and the worst part is, is like it comes in waves. So like you'll have yeah. a wave where like, oh my god, it's coming out. Like you're just like, oh, and the sweats and the pants and the fear and everything is just hitting you all at once, and then it like kind of calms down a little bit. You're like, okay, like I can, I can chill for like a couple minutes until it comes back and, and then it comes back with a fucking vengeance oh yeah, yeah. and then you resist yep. that and it's vengeance on steroids the next time yeah. it's like yeah yeah i, can... yeah. I showed I up to the like, cabin I, I said some... yeah i, I showed up to the cabin and said some fucking brief hellos and just fucking deleted that bathroom and then i saw mick go in right <laughs> after me he came out i was just like i'm so sorry man <laughs> <laughs> thing is mick was plastered so he, he didn't was even fucking, fucking know gone yeah. oh he know he knew he was like i gotta say know, like, i wasn't gonna say anything but yeah i say i feel bad because like like we showed up like around like what midnight or so to the, to yeah. the cabin and mick was already like so far night. gone like he did not need any more booze or anything <laughs> Dude, and the first thing i was the whole like, night yeah yeah like the reason he had a bottle of sand the rest of the night i kept feeding him stella i was like yo mick have another drink i, I was the bad influence so that, that's just me oh though that's God. what i do oh my God. dude i'm not i'm not gonna lie mick is fucking awesome in person Oh he, yeah, he's, he's fun. He is just like a whole load of fun, just all the time. Just so much yep. energy and just positivity, just awesome. I love. Do we had a nice little mandate? Uh, like one of the last few days there, like we just uh we took a little stroll into town, like bought a couple things. I bought a shirt. He bought a hat. He bought some other junk. We just had a nice little mandate for like an hour, you know, just two guys uh-huh. dating. Nothing wrong with that. That's what Olive that. and Solo Mission did at Dollywood. Oh <laughs> yeah, we, they were the only ones that didn't get fast passes. <laughs> so they were ah. sitting in line together for like two hours at rides, and all of us were just like <laughs> zoom in. I felt bad. I slept through that just because, like, that was the first day I had like an actual like hangover that was unbearable, like unplayable day. I was like, no, I I need to recover. I need to go into remission. I I need to just not exist for a few hours until I feel better. Oh yeah, like the first two days I was chilling. You? No, yeah, the first two days I was chilling. I woke up like right as rain the next day, even though I like drank a shit ton the first two nights. But then, like at that point, my body was just fracked. I was like, "No, you, you, you can't handle it anymore. You got to stop." <laughs> yeah, I would have died if I went to Dollywood. Same yeah, here. The last ride we went, on, we went on the uh, final ride like three times in a row because the park was closing, and so we could. Just, it was like no line, and I was like, I was about to burst. Like I was about to throw up. Like really hard after that last one i'm like thank god the park is closed now because if i would have definitely gone on more rides and i would have literally vomited because i was just getting so fucking sick of all the twists and turns and just but i will admit like that was that was definitely the most fun i had during the trip was dollywood but it was like 200 dollars basically like it you saved 200 dollars. so all right yeah i care about the experiences less about the money i'm spending yeah, I was definitely like looking forward to that. I'm really just mad that I missed uh, that breakfast place. Bro. That's what I was looking forward to the Bro, most. Bro, the pancakes at that breakfast Bro. place. That yeah. dude, that whole like, thing. I knew that place was going to be good. It slapped that that whole right. like everybody's dish, everybody's like bill was like 15 bucks. It was just like yep. you had like 10 pounds of food. Everybody yeah, had like, no, 10 pounds. Of that food. was like a proper southern breakfast joint. Oh yeah. And it was and good, I, and it was I will post yep. greasy. A picture. I will post a picture of a pancake. I don't know if you guys took a picture one, but like Jesus. that Fucking thing, Christ. that thing could actually like crush like small children. Like that yeah, pancake was thick. Up. That they, was a big pancake, they, and you got one complimentary. They literally brought out like eight pound cast irons with just a loaded fucking breakfast. And for those that ordered, I I ordered one of those. And I was just rubbing all the food and like all the grease at the end, dude. Oh, I was yeah. literally full for the rest of the day. Like, holy shit! Yeah, those pancakes were. Oh, it's good, yeah, I just, dude. I just wanted some real good biscuits and gravy, man. Yeah, uh, you definitely missed out. Fuck, man, you missed out Dollywood and the breakfast. Damn, I messed out on basically anything that happened in the morning. Like, I I have a hard time sleeping in a bed that's not my own as it is. Yeah. And yeah. My sleep schedule was fucked. I had food poisoning. It was just. Yeah. I, yeah. I felt bad for you. Like, I thought happen. I was like, oh wait, that man got the that man got hit like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, at yeah. least you weren't in the cabins or uh, not the cabins, the uh, the bunk room. 
Oh God, yeah. Dude, there's nine yeah, of us. That would have been gnarly. I mean, I was in a bunk room, but I was the only one in the bunk room. So, oh, nice, yeah. nice. I had the solo bed. I paid for it. I'm like, I want my own solo room just to like vibe out and chill. Yeah. In. I kind of yeah. now that the trip's over, I don't regret it because I saved money. But like, I would have definitely preferred my solo room because that yep. bunk room was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. From from after TwitchCon, like from here on out, I am getting the fucking room. <laughs> yeah. Like, holy fuck. Hey, let's say like you know you meet a little special someone, you want to take him back and everything. You're gonna take him back to a room with nine other guys in it. You're gonna take him back to a room with uh, just you in it. What we say? I'm not meeting a special something. You never know. Well, <laughs> maybe not a special something, but like a, a something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Literally anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the options yeah, like there, it's not so much for the option. Just like there's like more benefits than there are drawbacks to it. The only like real drawback is like you spend more money, but you can always make more money in the future. You know, yeah. You might have to like you know pull an extra couple of hours doing stuff. You might have to make an extra YouTube video or something. But hey, like it, it'll come back. Yeah, I mostly just liked it for being able to escape from the crowd. Oh just yeah, recharge for a little bit. Yeah, dude, our social batteries like everyone's yeah. got one. Dude, I was like overdrawn after that. It was like oh, five yeah. days of just like nothing but just like vibing with homies and everything. Yeah, yeah I, was I fucking dead. The, mm-hmm. the first night there was definitely my most energetic. That was like when yep. I arrived, and that was like when I was literally the most tired. I was running off of like no sleep. I was up for like forty hours or something. Yeah, me too. Because I couldn't sleep before like the night before because I had to wake up oh. super early. Yeah, I went yeah, to a concert the night before my flight, and I was like, <laughs> I, I, my flight was at like 7 a.m., so I just stayed up all night. Yeah, I literally just stayed up all night until like 3 a.m. for my flight, and it was all day of flying. Yeah, I got like Way a little two-hour nap at uh, Seth's house, and then that was, that was it. But it was nice to know that we're all, not everyone there is introverted, I, I don't think, but I think like the majority of us are definitely like pretty introverted. And yeah. so, I mean, even though we all we... got some, sorry, we all got some. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We we all got a little bit of the tism in yeah. us. Well, obviously. I think it's just like kind of apparent. We're like we all play RuneScape. It that just goes without saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the social battery, a hundred percent. Like by day two, by the end of day two, I was like, okay, I need a, I need like a two day breather now, and then like resume basically. But we didn't get that, so it's just like keep going. Yep. Yeah, and then by the end of yeah. <laughs> like the car ride you a cold oh one just yeah sit, i am like so napping. sorry that like i was not like one for like social anything because like that day my body was like little <laughs> no, it wasn't even running off fumes anymore it was running off of like filtration systems or something like my body was yeah. done for like a four-day bender where i was drinking copious amounts of alcohol the yeah. whole time like it was yeah. it was beyond over for me like i was done we and like I'm up on a hangover, I, I drank a Gatorade for the first time in like maybe a decade because I desperately needed it that bad, like something like as yeah. basic as that. And even then, I'm like, no, I need to just not exist. I'm sorry. I slept on the I slept on the plane ride home. I slept in the car ride back when my brother picked me up and everything. I just no, I I just could not. Dude. I needed a full 24 hour recovery system. I didn't even fucking sleep that night either. <laughs> The night, the night on the way there, and the and then the fucking night back. Like I just fucking didn't sleep those days. It was, oh god, yeah. That was those are some fucking gnarly flights. Yeah, I'm just in the back, like that four hour drive to the airport. I'm just in that center console, but there's no console. <laughs> I'm yep. just yeah, sitting yeah. on two people's like fucking armrests, barely. Yeah, dude, my back was hurting, but I couldn't oh, yeah, complain because I, I didn't have to get an Uber. I just fucking sit. Right. But, yeah, that was. Yeah, that I know you were fun. fucking going through it back there. That was not fun. It was uncomfortable as hell. But I was literally sitting on Prison Joe's like plushy lobster, <laughs> like <laughs> like a fucking like centimeter of cushion, kind of. It was horrible. Yeah. All right, so I gotta know who's excited for like not immediately excited, but I, I think like this event kind of got us like a little excited for the future. Like, hey, in six months we get to meet up and do it again. We got a nice break in between. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm excited for TwitchCon, but like, yeah, like the, the gap in between that we're having to wait like five months is like perfect. You know? Yeah, that is perfect. 
<laughs> yeah, I love you guys, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we all need we all need our space. We all need our own things. Yeah, yeah et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yada yada. See, I was hoping I'd get like a nice recharge from that trip. No, I ended up just arriving home and just being like. It's weird because, like, obviously I needed the recharge. Like, I needed to not be there anymore. But at the same time, I, like, missed it. Like, I, I realized it was over. I'm like, fuck. And then I got, like, sad. Yep. I was like, damn. Oh, yeah. Every time. Like, yeah. I thought it would be, like, a good recharge to, like, go back. And I was like, no. I just spent, like, five days just, like, damn. Like, <laughs> that was fun. But it's over now. Dude, I remember the thing is, like, the first day, like, after we, like, had our sleep in... I was like, this is only going to be for, like, a couple of days, so I got to, like, really enjoy this. And, like, I, I spent the whole day getting my mind out of, like, work mode because, mm. like, I don't know if you have this kind of thing where you, like, you have, like, a workaholic mindset where if you're not, like, nope. you know, progressing towards <laughs> something, you're not, like, actively doing something to progress anything. You feel useless to the world and, like, a lazy shit. I Even though, like, what we do, like, we're, we're video games. Yeah. Like, we're, at the end of the day, like, yeah, we're video gamers. Like, we do video game stuff for a living. But even now, like... Like, we have our own YouTube channels. Whale works on Trifecta. You put out the Rambles and the Save Bay cast. Like, I've mm -hmm. got my series that I'm, like, actively working on the side. And, like, we stream as well. But I feel like if I'm not doing something like that, I feel just worthless. Yeah. Dude, I hate it. YouTube. Okay, so I don't necessarily have that workaholic attitude toward things. But I still will feel that, like, super, like, you're lazy. Like, if I don't stream, if I don't do something, like, I get that, like, feeling of, like, damn, you really should have done something, you lazy fuck. Yes. But, yeah. I but, hate that. Yeah. yeah, it's horrible. It's not a good feeling. I think your day was wasted, basically. Um, yeah, I definitely feel better if I do something throughout the day, but I, I am not somebody who needs to do something. To not <laughs> yeah, I do it. not need to. That's for sure. I'm on Team Whale right now. Uh, but I will say, YouTube has been like, I'm so fucking grateful I started YouTube when I did. Instead of just continually waiting and putting it off. Because I would have put it off. I, I put a lot of things off. Yeah, I'm really glad I finally started. Yeah. Fucking same. I just like, I do it as like a for fun thing. So, like, I still make Twitch in my priority, and like, YouTube is just like something I do on the side. But like, whenever I feel like doing editing, I'll, like, I'll, I'll open up Filmora and put some work into it. But if I'm not feeling it, eh, I'm, I'm not doing it, you know? Yeah. 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 I need to start working on the next episode. I finally got all the clips, like, sorted and in their folder, but I have not started the uh, actual project file yet. So how do you I guys? Just hate <laughs> so so how do you guys actually enjoy um, like the editing process and stuff? Because I am someone where I start editing, I don't eat anything, it, and then nine hours passes, and I'm like, oh okay, well, I think I need to like go live or something, mm -hmm. maybe make some food, do some fucking something. It's really unhealthy, but you know. But you're like in the zone though. That's pretty cool. You can just do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like enjoying it. <laughs> That's cool. Mine might ramble a little bit, so, like, fair warning. Um, so, like, when I do my setups is, like, usually I like to do, like, long sessions with, like, one break in between. So, like, I'll sit down, like, I'll go about my day, like, when I wake up, like, you know, shower, maybe take a five-mile bike ride, two-mile jog, whatever. Like, get my exercise in, hang out with the animals for a little bit. And then just straight up edit for, like, six hours. And be like, yeah, I should probably eat some food, cook myself something, come back like an hour later, and then like session another like six hour editing session again. But there's like a whole ordering to like how I'll do things like episodes. Like I get all the clips, put them in, look like look over how I have to do all the voiceovers, write the script for it, record all that, and then just like like start trimming and putting everything else in layers and shit like that. There is like a really odd process like I go about things. I feel like every YouTuber definitely has their own way if they're making a yeah. series or if they're making an episode. Like Whale's definitely got his yeah. own like way of yeah. doing things as well. Yeah, I do it just like section by section, and then I I come to a good stopping point, and then just like keep going. <laughs> I have to wait till the next good stopping point to get off the fucking train. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, this is good. I got to go back and like redo that again. Hang on, like this could like get a touch up here since it's like a very uh, what do you call it? Like a very crucial part of uh, my video. Yeah, gotta make sure that's good and all that. So it's gonna be like you know the the flagship part of this one. Yeah, everyone has like their own stylings of things that, like how they do. I don't think it was like any like clear cut way of like you know you have to do X Y and Z in order to put out A B and C. Like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's very like broad with how we do things. Yeah, and one of the best parts of YouTube is just you make the final product, upload it, and you're just done. Like yeah, you, know, you don't have to sit there and now like talk to a live audience about it for ten hours. 
It's like, nah, yeah. just, just upload it and like you're you're good. Like you did the work. And, it's, and then you just get to reap the rewards of like, you know, was that the top 10? Was that like the first video or what? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The dashboard. And if it's like number one <laughs> or not. Bro, I, I know for, I know I have to like not look at that after I'm done with my series because nothing will ever match those again. 100%. Mm, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. You'd be, you'd, I think you might be surprised. No, like the thing is, I was shocked. Like, I, I'll look at it because I want to see, like, you know, what the reception is mm-hmm. for the series. But like, once I'm done with the series and I'm uploading, like, you know, just like you know, fill or crap or whatever the hell I'm doing, or maybe this new series, I'm not gonna care about that. But I was like kind of shocked. Like, the top video I knew was gonna do the best because people know me for top and everything, and like that got like really good numbers. And then the TOA one outdid the top one for the first like couple of days. I was like, oh shit, okay. I guess there's a lot of noobs that play RuneScape that only know how to do TOA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, one thing I was like taught by, uh, I, I don't remember which YouTuber told me about this. It might have been Settled, because like, I talked to him for a little bit about things, and I told him like he was an inspiration for like, waiting to put out the video instead of like rushing it like making sure it's a good final product like quality over quantity type thing yep but like i i think it might have been him that told me to not pay attention to those things because it will take a toll on your mental kind of like when you look at your viewer count for twitch as well yep yeah. and yeah. stuff like that looking at numbers is a double-edged sword usually for the worse it's what's good is the long term like seeing your growth over the months and years that's mm-hmm. like that's the really satisfying thing and you can gauge a lot more appropriately as well of like how you're actually doing without just seeing like a few uploads that just didn't do as well and you're like damn it's fucking over for me the career's over <laughs> <laughs> so like that's honestly one of the best things about youtube is just their analytics page just going through there like because i've been on youtube now for like three years and well will laughs but like it's a very real thought that goes through people's heads yeah when they look at it like that. it's a very <laughs> real thing i know yeah especially yeah. the older you get and you're like damn like i'm i'm literally an old man still doing this <laughs> like still yeah. playing roadscape and making content from it and uh yeah so yeah those thoughts definitely come yeah, yeah. But, it, it kind of like brings more like light onto the fact like when people compliment you or give you like genuine compliments saying hey I appreciate everything you do like you, you kind of used to like not take that shit for granted and stuff Dude, like that. I always brush it off absolutely. I always like make a comedy bit so it's like yeah I'm glad one of us thinks I'm funny that that that's good that you think that, that that's cool amen but, like it, it goes like a long way shockingly enough for like a lot of people like if you tell them like hey I appreciate oh, yeah. like shit that you do like it goes like, a it, long it, it fucking way yeah, <laughs> like it, it, it's, yeah. you're not gonna like notice it in videos, like, but like in an alternate universe where like let's say a content creator doesn't get compliments or stuff, they do. let's say Settle never got complimented for Swamp Politics, yeah, for example, Let, let's just play Devil's Advocate here and say he never got complimented, like everyone just like said this is a video or something, like nobody said good things about it. That series would have turned out a billion times differently. Yep, yep. And it's just yeah, the power of words, the fire it's just, like, under the words and stuff like that. Dude, it's totally true. I mean, I'll even have a day where I'm just like, I'm not going live. I'm not doing anything. But I'll log into the game, private off everything. I'm just doing my little birdhouse run or whatever. And I'll just run into somebody and they're like, hey, love your, like, absolutely love your videos, like, whatever. And it's just such a simple thing. But mm-hmm. it literally cheers me up way more. It cheers me up way more than it used to cheer me up just a few years ago, even being a content creator. it's. I think it's just because of, like, I think the more time you spend as a content creator, the more imposter syndrome you get. Like, the oh more... no, that I can fully relate with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it just it feels like everything you're doing, like anybody could do, like anybody could do what I'm doing, and I'm just th- this is how I've like started to feel over like especially like the past like year ish. It's just like man, like it feels like everything I do could just be replaced by somebody else like easily. And so that like negative thought process and that imposter syndrome, like really takes a toll over time. It just makes you feel like it, first of all, it makes me even more grateful for the community for just let, I mean, cause seriously, it's not like everybody that wants to be a content creator gets to be a content creator. Like, or yeah, gets to, you there's know, a lot of luck in this gets to pay their bills yeah. from it. So like just 
every day I'm like, holy fuck. Like, I'm so grateful. Like, mm-hmm. lit- especially nowadays, like, sheesh. Yeah, and it was always a pipe dream. Yeah. And then, and then seeing people that continually like support you and just give you shout outs a game, like, I don't take that shit for granted at all. It actually like really makes my day better. Here's the thing. You respond to every single one of those. I respond to like maybe 1% of those. I never really say anything in game. Actually, there was maybe I'm arrogant. Maybe I'm just a, an asshole. Probably both of them, honestly. But I, I just don't because like if I respond to one, I got to respond to all of them. <laughs> I try to res- deal. I, I try to respond to all of them, but like, like I, I see them. I the, just don't type. There, there was one guy this cast, Daddy Groot. He literally said Sebe is cool, and I just ignored it. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing, but I saw the message later. I'm like, fuck, that's that's not a good yeah. look because I try to respond to everybody. Hang on, I, I got this. Like, I had to grab this. Talk about people like you know talk about stuff and positivity. So spoiler alert, <laughs> he en- he ended up beating him like an hour later, and I was like happy for him. I was like, you win this round, I guess. But maybe you won't get lucky next time, Inspector Gadget. Or some d- I-, I said some dumb shit because I was just like bank standing for like at-, at Grand Exchange for like four hours, just doing nothing because I was doing other shit. And yeah. I just saw that. I was like, if he's a fan of mine, he'll laugh at this. And if he's not, well then fuck him. But that that he went is, along with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you know who a real one is, because like oh, you yeah. have a very distinct sense of humor. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. would. And then he like came back and said, "Oh, I just put a question." I'm like, yeah, good shit. You did that shit. You did the thing. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like responding to people, but there's just something nostalgic about just fucking talking to people in game for me. So if I if I see it and I am at my computer, I will generally respond to people. Yeah, I don't. The hard thing, this is my problem is, you know, it doesn't help that I'm already incredibly antisocial in real life, but I also made the decision years ago to like just have my private off when I'm gaming because I hate having to respond to multiple people in a DM on RuneScape. The messaging system (laughs) is a fucking atrocious. Like you can't, you can't deal with that. I'm respond, I'm like misresponding to random people that like, you know, I'm tabbing and then somebody else messages you like on that tick. So you're tabbing to another guy at that point and you're like, holy shit, like I couldn't deal with it. And then one of the worst parts, like I love responding. I love having like short interactions with people. But when the private was on, it was like I would have like a full on conversation with a person. And I'm like, I want to just play RuneScape right now. I'm going to be honest. So it's either I look like a total asshole by just being like, like cool man like all right like moving on we've responded like 30 different messages back and forth like let me play my game now instead of just continually talking but i don't know i i just couldn't find a way out of that awkwardness of like having mm-hmm. full-on conversations in runescape chat dm people tend to just keep it short and sweet with me thankfully so that's nice never See, really that's... Have to deal with that. or i just tell them i'm fucking doing something and they're like okay yeah i get it i'll fuck off yeah. yeah, I'm gaming right now, you know? Sometimes you just yeah. got to be gaming. Like Sometimes you got to send the radio stream where you just gaming out your gourd, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the other problem is, like, a lot of the time I'll be doing a ramble or making a Sebe cast, and then I'm getting, like, DMs. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, and, then I'm, and then I actually look like just an asshole because mm-hmm. I just won't respond. <laughs> it's like, and now okay. you got your thir- now you're turning your private off right now if it ain't already off it's been it's been off for years now i there i, I always go. get a little bit sad i'm not gonna look at it like I, I, i'm not gonna lie I, I look at my private off and it's like damn i'm antisocial. like just turn it on you pussy but i'm like <laughs> oh man i remember years ago i was doing my fucking my little hellhound task in the catacombs on a one of the 2k or 2200 worlds and then you showed up <laughs> we just fuck it. We cleared the fucking room. <laughs> Wait, what? What happened? Wait, for free. Oh. I'm confused. Yeah, I was like doing a hellhounds task in the catacombs on okay. uh, on trash can back in the day, and then you showed up on the same world, and we oh. just like cleared the fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I remember like, this. I don't remember. Yeah. Oh god. Oh god. Yeah, you had probably left to do a clue, and then came back on the same world, and mm. I had shown up. Well, you ended up hopping. Nice guy. Oh honestly. yeah, yeah. Me? Okay, sure. yeah. Uh, a little bit of that memory is ringing a bell. Yeah, I had my little salad blade. I was fucking gaming. This man went for salad blade. What an idiot, dude! Wow. Yeah, salad blade I mean, could have been so much better. That is the most yeah. underwhelming of the three like 
tiered weapons. It's just shitty. Yeah, yeah that shit sucks. So it, it even looks bad. Like, they still haven't fixed how you hold that thing. It just <laughs> you makes you look so proper. It's annoying. I gotta say, my problem with it is, like, its main use case, like, getting you for top before you get scythe, is, like, pointless. Because... It's completely pointless. Like, you You're not gonna get MVP. Like, yeah, you raid with three other people that have scythe that, like, take you along. Like, he's like, oh, he's trying to get a scythe. But, like, you take that blade, you get no extra MVP points for you getting a whip. So you literally just wasted, like, 120 hours getting that thing to do nothing. Yeah, you're just trolling. Yeah, yeah. No, mine's and, just and the copy. Now. And the copium's just like, oh, I got gems and GP and stuff. And, like, yeah, but you didn't get no scythe and no bitches, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm back to fucking tent whip on the iron. Uh, hell Dude, yeah. at least whipping just is more sa- using a whip oh. is more satisfying than even using a blade like i would literally i'd literally prefer to use a whip in fact i'd prefer to even use a normal whip over an abyssal tentacle yeah. i think the normal uh, whip just tentacle going- nice just for the poison i think going back to what Sabe was saying like i would be interested in playing like those uh those fresh like 2013 release old school runescape servers yeah. but probably for just like a month like yeah 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 probably like the same duration i played the original like old school launch because like i only played that shit for like a month or like two months after it came out see and you... then like but at that point i was playing league of legends like hella so i just like i, I didn't play runescape for like two years after that i just yeah. moved off like i just grew out of it like there was no updates there's nothing to look forward to there's nothing like new nothing fresh see, it would just be like a nice little trip down memory lane that would be the cool part of it though is that it wouldn't be super competitive and you wouldn't ever really feel the crazy urge to just play it all the time like kind of like old school now there's like always kind of something to do or like there's some new content coming out the new like an old school old school would just be something like you just have the feeling like you play it for a month burn out for six months play it for a month again burn out like just it would be that constant cycle but it would always be there and you know it hasn't changed yeah, I, th- like, I think, I think like would... half of it is like we're also looking for this kind of thing. I don't know, like if you play like leagues or dead man that often, like you know, fresh start accounts oh, wow. and like yeah, get into yeah. new stuff. I think we're just like heavily itching for that as well. Like people like watching the video right now can comment if they feel the same way. Like it's been a while since we've had like you know that fresh game mode, like start again, accelerated like progress, start from scratch, like kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. in main game, there's no real like incentive to like start from scratch unless like you're a pk or making like a, a new build like you're making a zerk or you're making a pure you're making a, a whatever the hell you're making yeah and if you're not doing that there's no reason to do it but like leagues and dead men brings about that reason to like you know go through the early game again and it's like accelerated experience so it's not like super like giga aids to do or whatever you know yeah i want the giga aids though that's why i want the old school i can't i just can't do leagues i can't do anything that ends i hate the feeling uh, of it ending it. I, I miss it so bad. I'm to- I'm totally fine with that ending because then you don't have to worry about like feeling attached to it, you know. Yeah, it's I like, like yeah, there's no sense. You make the most of it. You make the most of it now, you know. I need attachment. I, think I need I've, a break. I, th- I think I've become too aware. Like I'm I'm too aware of how much time I'm investing on this, and to realize it's just gonna be deleted. It just uh, yeah, I can't get over around. it either. <laughs> I like the idea of the world ending and like a we- like not in a like a neurotic way like oh yes I want to see the world burn but like I like the idea of like the game eventually like has an end to it and then we can celebrate it and like one of the cool things about I like about leagues is like in the final couple of hours everyone like meets up for like a big like you know end of the world party damn and, like, yeah everyone drops yeah. these items on the floor like I got some old That's pictures of, like Trailblazer where uh. RSGF was trying to get full Guthans and she got like ten G spears before she finished the set. And, like, we had, like, a big drop party, and I see, like, her corner, there's just fucking ten Guthans spears just all on the floor <laughs> together. That, that is true. There is something yeah. There's something nice about that. Yeah. yeah okay, fun. so what about the next league being non-Iron Man, where everyone's a fucking main, and it's not about... So I, I want to just clarify that I think what Jagex has hinted at is that the next leagues will not be a... Top one percent get a dragon trophy. It'll just be if you get fifty thousand points, you get a dragon trophy. Boring. So, so the reason that would be nice is if they chose to do a main man mode, because then you don't have that resentment toward people that are, oh, he's just using his clan to feed him or whatever. Like, I think it would be cool to have a league that's non Iron Man. I think I'd actually be more enticed to play that too, because it would just be more of just a party and just fun. Instead of this weird, 
like sweat fest for six weeks and then random extension of two weeks later just fucking pissing everybody off well that's like kind of the point of like getting the dragon trophy showing like you know you went through that bullshit that's like kind of what it's supposed to signify and it's like a worthless item but i think it would be cool to just set it at fifty thousand in the in the case that it would be main man mode because then you're not people that are actually actively trying to go for a dragon trophy are not going to get you know have have an unfair disadvantage from people that can just trade with alts and other shit. Like if people still want to do solo mode, they could still get a dragon trophy. I get like the meaning behind that, but it also means like the dragon trophy also has like less luster behind it. It's like something cool to go for, but it also doesn't mean anything at the same time unless you want it to mean something. So would it would it be better? Uh, so are you just against main mode or do you think it would actually be better if it was still a 1% top, but it's main man mode? So people that are just trying to play solo might feel at a disadvantage. So I'm someone that like, I don't like Iron Man as a game mode, but in like accelerated like game modes like this, where you have like, you know, 16 X experience, like, you know, triple resource, like accompaniment, whatever stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I can bear it. And that's kind of the thing that like leagues has like, built its identity off of and if you change this like you know oh everyone's a main account now then it becomes a dead man without pking in a way you know yeah exactly i understand yeah, it that. just like, it entirely like changes the dynamic of like what the game mode was like meant to be it's supposed to yeah. be like your own journey like i think like trailblazer definitely like crafted it the best like it showed like your journey your own choices your own preferences to whatever gameplay style you really wanted to go for and if you were a basic bitch you went kandarin as garnia mauritania melee <laughs> And if you weren't, you you were like a you were a hyper brain person like me, and you picked the desert, and you did lots of damage because you're smart. But that's besides the point. It, so do you know, think I feel like should... if you take that away from that, if you like make it game like a game mode for leagues and its main account, you're taking part of what makes leagues leagues away. If that makes yeah. any sense. So main man mode should never be in a league. In a league. Yeah. No, I, I don't think yeah. so. Okay. I don't think it belongs. I mean, to be honest, I don't even play League, so I'm like the the person that should be the least, you know, represented. You should definitely try it out. You really missed out I, for not playing Trailblazers. I tried Leagues 3. I played it for three days. I was playing like 16 hours That was the day. worst one. That was honestly yeah. the worst one. Dude, I did yeah, I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't have a, that good of a time, to be honest. <sighs> it was just like, I think it was Jimmy that said it best. Like, Trailblazer did it best. You made nine choices, and then you played the game. And then yep. Leagues 3, before you do anything, you gotta pull up a buggy, laggy interface, read stuff for, like, an hour before you kill three bandos, and then you gotta change it again. Mm. Yeah, that was annoying. Yeah, I didn't... I, I Well, first of all, I also don't play early game and mid game enough at all. Actually, not not even enough. I just literally have not done it, so... My route in it was refuse to do quests. <laughs> so that much. makes it more. Inter- the thing is, like that kind of thing is what makes your account yours and gives your account identity. Like you're not a quest kind of guy. You look like not a quest kind of guy. But in leagues, <laughs> no one fucking cares. It's all about just having a fucking good time yeah. and enjoying the shit. That while well, we still got this for like two months or one month or however long they're gonna make the next one. Yep. Yeah, I, I think I just lacked like vision. I didn't even know what I was doing by the end of day three. I'm like, what? Like, what is the purpose of this? Like, what am I trying to do? Because I was thinking of like maxing, but I'm like, why the fuck am I trying to max this? Like, what's the point? And then because you get points. I know, yeah, and points. that, and I, I wasn't even doing it on, on this account though. So all those points would have meant nothing. So I think yeah. the next time I do leagues, it'll have to be on this account, just so I can get some of the leagues rewards. I just, uh, I really want them to do uh, Twisted League again after like Varlamore and all that comes out and they like flesh out Zaya a little bit Ooh. more. Because that one would have been really they... fun with boosted drop rates and yeah. broken. Oh, out. yeah. And they have to rework Piscarilius. Is that a Pis- 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 yeah, Piscarilius? Yes. And I always want to say Piscalarius because it's hilarious. No. Uh, um, and then they need to fix Lova Kang. As well, and Arceus, both all three of those places still look like a shit show. So if they reworked all those and added Varlamore, it would be perfect. And sailing, because then there would be sailing. Holy shit! I, I don't think... want sailing. Fuck that. That'd be sick. I, sailing around. I just don't care at this point. I'm just glad it's not shamanism. <laughs> I know. 
Okay, we didn't Wait, actually I, talk I was about for it. Or taming personally, but I knew that voting for taming was a fucking dude. Waste of a vote, I was so. actually team taming oh, initially, and then their fucking proposal was the weakest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. It was like you go to your pet daycare <laughs> and have your pets be trying to like, bruh. Yeah, I, you have to hype it up more than that. Like, holy yeah, shit! I'm, I'm just a sucker for little guys, you know. See, I I was too. I thought like having little pets and shit. And having like a catalog of your pets, similar to like a Pokédex or something, would be fucking awesome. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Training has sounded fucking awful. All right, let's let's take a break. I need to pee as well. Yeah, I could I could I could empty the lizard. I'll be back in a couple. Okay, this is cold one secret comment section before Sater gets back. I want you guys to leave a comment down below in the video saying Toiletron, like Megatron from the Transformers, but replace Mega with Toilet, and we're not going to tell him why we're leaving that comment it'll be a mystery to him forever and we're gonna fuck with him that is all thank you also gm who are playing with a worm yeah, who are belong in the johnson <laughs> long in the yawn damn that's a dead account lucky that motherfucker gonna have to fall out of love with that motherfucker's coming back <laughs> <laughs> like a d ulti just to make another ulti is like yeah this shit still sucks peace Bro, like, fuck, there was like a week where the last time I had even seen the dude was in Tennessee after I got back. All right, check your uh, DMs real quick before uh, Sager gets back. Pretty sure it's going to get cut out, though. No, 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 no. He better not cut I swear, like, nah. He has to put up the unedited version. If he doesn't, then I, I'll see no comments and know he did that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, hey, welcome GM, back. GM. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go to the Twitter topics because uh, we haven't even touched those. That's not like not like uh, there's many, but here, um, forty two asks, "Is Whale the type of guy too?" No, yeah. I've yeah. never <laughs> been the type of guy too. I'll never be the type of guy too. I'm not the type of guy. I don't know why people keep saying that. Nine Rain, the type of guy to. Nine Rain is the type of guy. To... Me, I'm just a guy. Yeah, dude, the Nine Rain, like it's. All of those nine rain, like, so for those listening, and if you've been on Twitter and you've seen all the nine rain, the type of guy to posts on Twitter, um, they're so accurate. Every single one of them, especially after meeting nine rain, I mean, it's completely accurate. Yeah, I they're all completely true. Over him doing fucking pull ups with a rake in the gazebo. <laughs> I was like, nah, no fucking shot. That was, an, that was incredible to witness Dude. with my eyeballs. Yes. Nine rain, nine rain, and I were both working out day, uh, day two in the morning after the breakfast. We're like, let's let's burn some of those calories. We fucking ate like two pounds of butter, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then nine rain took it. Like it, I, I was done after that. I was like, I'm I can't work out anymore. I, I gotta just enjoy my vacation. And then nine rain, like a couple days later, yeah, f- fucking putting the rake in the gazebo. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, doing his dips with like those like chairs in the gazebo as well. Yeah, fucking king shit. Um, will we ever see Inferno or above difficult content before Carlisle sells Jack X? No, we won't. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I mean, it'd be nice, but no. We all know we're not getting that because of a. Uh, I don't know. There was like a stream a while ago. They said they weren't going to make like content that was like more difficult than or like equal difficulty than Tob or inferno ever again what and when did they say that yeah that was like a yeah. while ago they also said they wouldn't cater to iron men though so you know here's yeah. hoping yeah but that's saying like they won't do something that's gonna make more oh, people want to play the game yeah, yeah. and like true. the thing is like there's only so many people that are like good at the game but like there's a lot of people that suck at the easiest video game in the world and they all play it so do they not care about the just sheer amount of hype that something like Inferno brings to the community. No, what? they care about the bottom. They care about the bottom line on the PNL charts. God, that's, that's so all. fucking infuriating. Like, why? Yeah. Well, now you're learning a very valuable lesson. The only thing that matters in the world is money. I know. I've, I'm a yes. very slow learner. <laughs> so that's you get the idea. So yeah, we're not getting something like that ever again. There was the tease of Blue Inferno a year ago, and then it was never followed up on. So. That now, should tell you everything I, you need to know. I think Blue Inferno could come out. Um, it would just be that going past a certain point is pointless. <laughs> like, there's yeah. not going to be any rewards beyond a certain point because, you know, that would be unfair to the noobs. 
Um, but because what I what okay, well, this is my imagination or my uh, image of Blue Inferno is it's endless. That's what I would like to see, and like it has those like enraged mechanics. But I think what they kind of were proposing was it was like a eight or twelve wave thing or whatever it was. And, uh, it got like a lot of like uh, it got like all the Inferno speedrunners like really excited, and then we it's just like it's called a blue Inferno because it gives you blue balls about Inferno, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And and I, listen, like I'm not even one of those people that would be all over a brand new super super difficult piece of content. I just want to see it. I just want it to be in the game and have it as some insane challenge and watch just as a viewer, like. Yeah. Seeing people go hard on the impossible is so amazing. Watching Exact doing that 40 combat Inferno, Afsol yeah. doing the 39. Isn't he going for like a 38? Did he already do a 38? He was going for a 38 or something. But I think he got it? I don't know. People doing the impossible like that is yeah. what I mean, inspires players, you know? It's what fucking brings... It gives the game more depth. And it gives yeah. the game more like respect almost just like holy shit nobody fucking pks but everybody loves pk content oh yeah watching it yeah, yeah watching i'm it, gonna watching find some uh some stuff really quick because uh talking about like older stuff like you know inferno release and like the hype and stuff like that i have some pictures of what Twitch directory look like when I was on mobile, like when I was on lunch break at work. We got to see um, this. We got yeah. I, I got to find these really yeah. quick. I think yeah. I know like what folder they're in. I'm going to have to like look around a little bit. Uh, For those yeah, listening couple... on Spotify, I'm, I'm sorry. This is a more visual. Yeah, more visual I'm, I'm lucky. Honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll you... describe the, the pictures for you. Yeah, like describe the taste, you know. God, a couple of months ago, I went back and I watched like the Kelvino video of him getting his first cape. Like, just the sock fight. That oh, shit is yeah. so fucking funny to watch. Because it's just like, he just has no fucking clue what he's doing. Yeah. Dude, dude I, I uploaded a, um expert TOA solo video of me doing it like week one. <laughs> and I have no idea what I'm fucking doing, <laughs> basically. And so I continually get comments on that video oh, like every week God. or so. A new comment like, "What the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you doing it this way? What are you doing? Like, what?" I'm like, "Bro, this was literally released when I was a dumbass. Like, I was, I was literally just eating the fucking pillar at the beginning of Wardens because I had no idea what the mechanic was. So I'm just eating red balls the entire phase until it ended." All right, there right, you go. Here's some images. This is also on light mode because this is like when a dark mode was a thing. So. Nah, you don't yeah, need to. Do, no excuses. Me. No excuses. You're a light motor. That's fine. I'm not a light motor now. <laughs> oh, man. Why would you say that? Yeah. God, yeah, I miss in front of 30,000 so viewers. Yeah, and you're not going to get that now. Uh, I, okay, I have a couple more. I'll just like, put the dump I have from like this block of stuff. Yeah, him passing uh, Riot Games uh, JP as well. Summer Split being just bypassed by Wooks. And the stream title is called Jad. What are you doing here? Bro, like, look at his inventory. The dude has a fucking imbued heart in there. Yeah. Like, four-way mate switch, a, an Elijah, an SGS, SGS like, yeah. and one and one singular raging potion, which is for the end. Yep. And that's like what it was. Like, that's what no I guess, tile was. markers, no NPC indicators, no oh, yeah. anything. Yeah, this is drop singular rune on the floor type beat. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Jesus, I man. Got, I got two more. I got um, two more memes that are very prevalent to this as well. Come over. Me. I can't. I'm watching the second day of Inferno attempts. Her. But my parents aren't home. Me shuts my fucking phone off. <laughs> That's true. Like, this shit was, like, actually exciting. It was, like, Fight oh, Caves yeah. 2. But the thing is, like, it's based around, like, Fight Caves 2. Like, something that we all have, like, a lot of nostalgic bite for, you know? Like, if Inferno 3 comes out, I don't think it will outdo Inferno, or, like, Inferno 2 or Fight Caves 3. If that comes out, I don't think it will do, overdo, like, Inferno release, you know? Yeah, no. There, there is a chance, but it has to be, like, really hyped up, and it has to be, 
it literally has to be called Inferno 2. And it didn't, haven't they literally already given a hint of like Zuck saying, like, you, oh, you've killed him this time around? For now. Or or for yes, now, yeah. for now. It hinted at like Inferno hard mode or something. So that's what that they need to do. It, it, it needs to be Inferno related. So everyone understands this is Inferno difficulty on steroids. And they need to hype it up for like a year prior. And then they need to release it and Wooks needs to go live. And it needs to be something so difficult that it isn't completed day one. Yeah, we've only had that twice difficult. now, which is a uh, top. We had that for like Tob took thirty hours to complete, and Inferno took I think fifty five hours to complete after release moment, or maybe fifty or something like that. Hmm. That was the only time, like the only two times in the game where something wasn't completed day of release. Like thankfully, Expert Mode TOA was completed I think twenty or twenty two hours after release, and. Okay. I was almost the one to do it, but I was on, like, awake for 20 hours off my fucking gore, and I could not focus anymore, and I died to, like, the white mechanic from, like, failing skull skip, and then Jay rays ended up getting it, like, 10 minutes after. I was like, okay, I'm going to fucking sleep. Bye. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. TOA release was pretty fun. I don't know. I just had, like, a group of uh, a bunch of fucking Ultimate Iron Men, and we just fucking... Did you am teams and it was yeah. it was a good time. No, nah, it was fun, but it just didn't have that same like thrill. I mean, it yeah. was it was gonna like if they come out with fucking anything, it's gonna be fun. Like you know, day yeah. one. Like they come out with fucking Temporos, people are having a kind of fun time. Kind of. I didn't yeah. do it, but some people were having fun. I memed on that shit like when it came out. I was like, oh wow, the fishing boss batches. Like, wow, it was so exciting. And I tried it out. I was like, okay, this is actually kind of good for like a fishing minigame. Like, they did a good job with this, but it, it ain't no TOB, obviously. But yeah. Right. Yeah. It, they did a good one. They Dude, can give themselves a pat on the back. Uh, that least. actually like just bothers me so much that they'll never come out with something like TOB again. TOB was so dark. It was just like, I know. Th we're going to send this Raids 2 that we've been teasing. There's no in. There's no entry mode. There's no bullshit. You're going in. You have no fucking idea what's going on, and you go in there, and the J mods are watching on a big screen at the office, laughing at you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and like it was just so fucking awesome to see that nobody was completing it, and everyone's having a struggle. Everyone's losing hundred Ks over and over and over. And the the weapons that you get though are just unreal like you get a fucking scythe like holy shit a sang a rapier even a vernick all of that Bro, the shit. original the first vials of blood sold for like a mil each or something like that like the first vials of blood to enter the game yeah and that was like true like oh my god man like you nailed it i know nobody was playing it i know like i wasn't even doing it i had literally gotten an inferno cape a week before and i was one of those players that probably should have been doing top or was excited about it and i literally didn't do top for like six months because i was that intimidated by it i was like no this is and getting a team was hard and all that shit yeah. Yeah. yeah nobody wanted to take this like iron man named trash can with half an armor set i don't know what the fuck that mm -hmm. was and it was difficult oh, like yeah. it wasn't even just the fact that like oh i need to get a team it's like bruh even some of like the best gamers were struggling with like getting the timing of Versic. It's so easy now that we think about it. It's like fucking four ticks. Just step back, dumbass. But when you when you have that one opportunity to learn it and you're already like shaking because it's your first time at Versic, you have no idea what's actually happening. You don't understand the mechanics. Like everything's incredibly overwhelming, and it just is so fun. It's like that's like the fun of it, man. Yeah, the discoverability, the unknown factor, like that, things not being solved. Uh, yeah, Things everybody keep going Verzik. That's the problem with invocations and the f entry mode and shit like this. It's like, yes, you're going to get more people playing it, but... Yeah, it looks better on the piano charts about? in the like, bottom one. Yeah, God, for Jagex nowadays, yeah, that's what it's about. It's so annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks, but that's how it is. Yeah, welcome to business. Enjoy. At least we did get Inferno and TOB, though. At least we got a taste of oh, that yeah. glory. I mean, they're still there. I know, but just like those that those first few, yeah. First, and and the, the best part was was like we had such limited gear back then too. But I mean, besides the Tebow, yeah, and ancestral. Tebow was only so. helping so much in TOB. Like it was mostly based around melee. Yeah, you had a whip. 
<laughs> fucking tentacle whip. That's all you had to start off with. And oh. Or you had seven bill for a safe. Yeah. You, you had a, a tentacle whip, bandos, which nobody was bringing anyway, probably. Well, maybe some people were day one. I don't know. And then... Um, what am I thinking? Uh, oh, a dragon defender. Like, just dog shit, basically. <laughs> All right. So, you want some throwback stuff? Of like, course. <laughs> a little after, uh, like, they made it scale down so you could, like, do it in four minutes and three minutes without being punished too hard. Uh, I, I want to say, like, two months after Tob release, like, very few people had done this. They, very few people had done Duo Tob. I, I hit up Rice Cup. I was like, how do you feel about, like, trying to Duo Tob with, like, minimalistic gear and just like you know just fucking let's just send it like hog wild let's just get this shit done and like second try like i think we've reset it like night of the room like second try we got it and like that was a big thing back then because like very people few people could pull that shit off but like that was like something that was like exciting to do because like one it was just like difficult too there was like a lot of uncertainty and i don't know it was just like hard to pull off like back then as well and that was also when first yeah. was bugged so like when she attacks like she just she doesn't physically like visually move but she's physically moved so she oh, should be yeah. quaking you from across the like stuff like that oh so, yeah i remember that yeah yeah that was i know I, I still have like very fond memories of like pulling that off with rice i was like bro that that shit was actually like kind of hype yeah that's getting that off for the first time that that, yeah, that was actually some fucking gaming type beat right there damn dude do you remember when like the best pvmers were cloud badass and reed yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's when i started watching and Twitch. Calvino. i refuse to not let Calvino be in the conversation well, of course I'm, I'm i'm talking about more of like the i mean because you know no disrespect whatsoever to cloud badass and and uh reed but like nowadays you know there's just so much more stuff they they feel rusty like they are they are rusty you know yeah with Calvino, so. if you i don't think he plays but if he were to come back he wouldn't be rusty like he, he might he, be a little rusty. He might be, but his clicks were insane. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. his knowledge. Okay, he, would, yeah. he would he would come out with like the thing is like he was on like a different level. I feel like, and again, no disrespect or whatever, but I just felt like people knew who Cloud Badass and Reed were because they were streamers, yeah, and YouTubers and stuff. Like, and I know Kelvino made YouTube obviously, but like, it's just crazy how back then it was. How many Bandos kills can you do in one trip? And, like, how many DKs can you do in one trip? And, like, that's all. I mean, that's all you had, basically, to even yeah. show for. Yeah, that was the PBM pinnacle back then. Dude, have you seen um, these Inferno speedrunners, Adicon, Scotty? Yes. Yes, oh, I have. Monkey. What the fuck, dude? The bar's been raised very much so. Like, what the fuck yeah, is going on? About. What the fuck is going on in the, like... Bro, you enter the Inferno with no bruise. Like, you yeah, just, fuck it. you have no food. You, you, yes, we have a Blood Fury, which is incredibly OP. <laughs> incredibly OP. But you just go in there and you're speed running the shit out of it to four, 42 minutes. Like, what is going on here in this game? Like, the skill level is so ridiculously high. It's just nuts. The speed running it is just insane to me. I just I see that shit and I'm like, dude, if I ever thought I was good at this game, like I'm just not. <laughs> there's people go. that just dedicate years to just I don't know, going super hard. Noob type as well, doing those like pioneering those six hundred TOA solos. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many people that are just like way too good at the game. I just clicks with them. The the speed running it's because like I would consider you a cold one in the area of just god tier gaming mechanical no making mistakes. I mean, just the sheer amount of fucking solo tops you've done <laughs> have proved that. Uh, how many have you done, by the way? Like, I don't count anymore. Three hundred more, way more than that. Jesus but like, I, I just don't count anymore. I think it's like my PB for soloing top. Is like five minutes slower than world record. That's the wild thing. Oh but I've also not put like any effort into soloing or like speed running anything That's the, like that. Ever, like yeah. since before thralls came out. Like once thralls came out, I stopped bothering with speed running entirely because I'm not a fan of uh of spellbook swap meta. Mm. 
at all. Yeah, I there hate are that. There, there's so many crazy metas you have to do now, and uh, and also there's a difference between like mechanical and like perfect click precision at all times and doing like four clicks and a tick and doing these crazy like just oh my god like i was talking about it with um who was i talking about it with like uberu i think just last cast and just even if i were to put in as much time as these inferno speed runners i still wouldn't be losing two minutes just off misclicks you have to be so fucking precise. You have to have Zoomer clicks. You have to have literally Fortnite clicks. Uh, not necessarily that. It's also like they're very well experienced with it. So like if you were to try and solo top for the first time now, your completion time with rooms would probably be like 70 or 80 minutes. And if I do it, it'll be like 55 minutes. And it's not saying that like, you know, you're drooling on yourself or anything. It's just you're be. new to it. You're well, OK, well, not like that, but like <laughs> you're you're just like new to it in a way. And even if you do, like, you know, like, 10 of them, like, your time will probably go down to, I don't know, 70 or 65-minute room times, and mine's still, like, 55 on average. It's just, like, I'm more familiar with it in that sense, and you can compare that to, like, Inferno. Like, you're not fucking around, you're not, like, AFKing, you're not, like, rank 2, learner's welcome, getting 100-minute PBs. You're you're doing stuff. You're you're hitting stuff at a reasonable pace. It's just you're not as experienced as the people that like you know base all of their gameplay around doing that yeah, and speedrunning that content. Yeah, I'm just thinking about my 15 minute Zarpus in the last league where I had hey, there one you go. safe tile. Oh yeah, <laughs> we we call that the solo mission Zarpus. Yeah, that was oh, so yeah. fucking fun. Okay. Because, yeah, like never, never think of yourself like negatively. Like, oh, I, I, I'm not getting the times that like these other people are. Like, I, I'm not good at the game. Like, you're just not like, experienced enough. You haven't yeah. done it as much as they have. Like, that, that's most good, of it just comes down to like how much you've done it and like how much time you've put into it. You know, that really is the yeah. You're right about that. Actually, and the more I think about it, the stuff I have gotten good at. Initially, I'm just a fucking. I don't know. Just. Uh, uh, what, what did the coxie call it? A burger. I'm just basically a burger when I go in. A burger. That's yeah. a that's a sick nerd term right there. Oh, looks like coxie is stealing terms. I'm gonna have to yeah. report him for that. Hang on a minute. Well, I already did my daily report. I don't I don't know if I should overdo that. Just just to be safe, you know. Yeah, just, you never know. <laughs> just in case. Dude, um, I got a I, yeah. off topic, but like I got someone in my chat like not too long ago. I did like you know the fake report thing where I type in the name and then hit instead of clicking you hit escape and. It doesn't actually send a report or whatever. So he, some dude finally fell for that because like everybody else has an IQ above eighty and doesn't fall for it. <laughs> and he was like, "Yo, that's really rude. Like, why would you just randomly report him like that?" And like he genuinely meant it. And I was like, "Thanks for self-reporting <laughs> below eighty IQ." And then he got defensive. Like he went down the pipeline of like, "Oh, I've been called out for being stupid. I'm gonna insult the person that called me out." I love that pipeline. It's great, dude. Content report button doesn't work and nothing can prove me wrong on that like you cannot give me evidence of the report button doing Hang fuck on. all i'm gonna, I'm gonna okay so i want you to open up runelight do not show this name on stream uh because we're like we're soft tracking it to see how long it takes for it to get banned naturally so i want you to look that up on the high scores okay we're, we're watching it. We've been watching it for weeks. We want to see how long it takes for the auto detection to like pick this up. Not a, like let alone the name is what it is. Okay, you know like yeah how that got through like name filtration is Jesus something else. Jesus Christ, yeah. Yes, I, I had to scroll down <laughs> first. Yeah, they couldn't see it initially. Yeah. My boy Dirt count. Nerd found this one day. I was like, there's no shot. That's Dude. actually something that exists. Okay, I, I by the way when you tweeted that meme of we banned over a hundred runescape counts this past <laughs> week <laughs> i was literally in tears dude i was literally in fucking tears i was like pounding my fist on my bed just like fucking laughing so hard because <laughs> it's just like what are you you flexing that you banned a hundred accounts in a week Let's like go. bro there's a hundred accounts on this world botting zora right now like jesus christ Give him the old thumbs up. Hey, you did it. <laughs> and that picture is just so good. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was awesome. It, it makes me sad that, like, 
it's there are literally tens of thousands of accounts that have never been played by a human and just play for thousands and thousands of hours and just get all this shit done and they never get banned or you know just takes them forever after they've already cashed out and all this shit but they'll ban a real player who's truly supported the game and just has put in a bunch of time that makes one mistake i'm talking about seven yeah, or maybe he's made multiple mistakes two, to be honest or two mistakes or yeah. me like where yeah. i make one mistake and bought two levels of yeah. ability or whatever yeah i get the idea and and then like just to make that like yeah we're doing our part look at us at jagex we're banning our real players like bro you got tens of thousands of fucking ai bots out there and you ain't you ain't you ain't doing shit about it and now you're banning yeah. like content creators and shit that like actually it's support making the game. an example i like, know and and i will say i do still understand that you need to you need to ban real players that are breaking the rules like i understand that but like bruh yeah, that's just normal say when, when you're be like yeah when your entire game is, like, is why people like go into it in the first place like why normal players and even content creators go into it in the first place is because we'll see things like i want to say like a couple months ago like one of my mods excel like he ran across uh like two accounts in full rogues and untrimmed thieving capes at a master farmer southeast of dark wizards and he's like go look at these real quick and i right click them and look them up they're both 200 mil thieving I hop a world down, I find two more accounts with 200 mil thieving. And if you do the math on it, they've been doing that for about three or four months. Untouched. Yep. Just nothing. Non-stop yeah. like, too for four that's months. That's calculating 18 hours a day. Yeah. For like, you know, the average, like, you know, number, like what Potter say, like, you know, if you do more than 18 hours of gameplay a day, that's when Jagger starts looking at you. And if you're underneath that threshold, they won't. So you calc off that, they've been doing that for four months untouched at all. But the thing is, I went there on stream, and there was one JMod in my stream who is a very big regular. And two days later, they all, like all 14 200 mil thieving accounts that we saw were all banned. Every That's single good. one. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, like, it's more so shocking how like their detection doesn't pick that kind of thing up. It really brings light or like shadow to whatever you want to call it to that yeah. situation. Yeah. What they really need to do is just have an automated response. When when you report somebody, you need to get feedback about it. You need to get a message in your Jagex inbox saying, hey, remember that report you sent? Yeah, we've banned that person. Automated response. That's all you need to do because right now, nobody reports anybody because it doesn't mm -hmm. even seem like it works. It doesn't. It actually doesn't. I know. And, and I have literally done my due diligence trying to report people. I still do to this day. Just on the off chance the fucking negligible chance that it's actually even reviewed by any human or any system or anything that's get the report button it's just there for like to make you feel like you did something even though it doesn't fucking work but if they would just send an automated response that would be such a huge help to like botting in general and break and rule breakers that's what twitter does when you report somebody on twitter i've reported people on twitter and on Twitch, and you get a response back on your e in your email saying, "Hey, that report you sent, we've taken action against that account." Like that makes me feel so much better. It's like, oh wow, wow the thing I actually did did something. That exact thing uh, exists in League of Legends as well, where if you report someone and like actions taken against their account, whether it's like two day suspension, five game mute, permanent ban, whatever, it tells mm -hmm. you like this action was taken upon a player that you reported. It gives you like validation saying like, hey, the report system works. Even if it's lying, it, like yeah. Jagger should put that thing in and like lie, like every couple of days, like lie to me. have it automatically yeah, like lie to you and it would make you feel better. It would. But I don't yeah. think that's like a good system. I think it like actually should give you feedback saying, hey, something you reported uh, helped us out. So thank you for doing your part. Yep. It would more incentivize like people to report things like that if like some like wrongdoings are happening to make it feel like you're making a difference because otherwise like there's no point. Exactly. Because the report button as of the current moment doesn't do a fucking thing. It's at all. horrible. It doesn't do anything. It's fucking horrible. And, like, I know. If you knew some of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes, like there are, uh... I'm not gonna name names and I'm not gonna Try name to like accounts or anything what? for obvious reasons. But there is a lot of stuff that's going on right now. Like, imagine, like, what old broken plugins were. All, but it, it's just an automated bot system that sends packets and it's undetectable. 
and Jeez. there's a lot of that going on. There are, there are accounts that have basically been using this kind of thing ever since the quote-unquote client ban just under a year ago, and they're untouched. Entirely just untouched. Damn. Yeah. Like, and not to sound like a doomer, but, like, that's the issue that's going on right now. I don't know if it, like, comes down to the size of, like, the anti-cheat team or whatever, or, like, lack of tools or resources, but, yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on with the game. Oh, I mean, I believe it. I'm just not in yeah. that scene, which... It's nice, to be honest, because I it's, would it, become It's better to just not be... Because otherwise, yeah, you will just become like a, wow, it's actually just in the bin, it's doomed, it's etc. Like, ignorance is bliss is very much a term that <laughs> is very know. prevalent here. Yeah, I've been... I like not seeing it. Sorry, what'd you say? I like not seeing it. I know. Kind of nice. You're, you're right, though. Ignorance is bliss. Mm-hmm. I, I like, have made the deep dive in recent months of, like, just reading a bunch of people like in the 18th, 19th and 20th centuries, like philosophy on stuff. And like a lot of the philosophers, like by the end of the day, it's like, I wish I wasn't fucking as aware <laughs> as I am because it just makes like, you know, life. Like the more it, you the, know, the more, you know, the more is everything's just super absurd and shit. And that's the same thing with RuneScape. The more you, the more you actually knew about the ins and outs of what's actually going on. And oh my God, that would be depressing. The more you know, the more you wish you didn't know. <laughs> no. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's like a very, it's a true topic. Like, if you want to like, uh, like oh, I got to find out about this drama, just don't. Simply just don't. Go about your day and ignore it. Seriously. Exactly. You'll enjoy yourself more. Dude, yeah, sometimes I think like. not your job to care. Yeah. Yep. No, true. Yeah. The, the other thing I think is like, we live in a, a day and age where we're just on the internet all the time. And just you get news of like the most horrific things that have happened in the world <laughs> you know what i mean and just a generation ago there was none of that it was just you live in your little circle you know you're living your little group or your community and you have no fucking idea really what's happening outside of your village or <laughs> maybe not village but just like your your community you know and I think, like, I don't know what the actual consequence of knowing everything that's happening in the world at all times, basically, has for, like, the human brain. But it can't be that healthy, knowing all this shit. You know? Or, or just, knowing. or just like, just understand, like, just having that access to un just, just knowing exactly what's going on in the world, kind of, you know? It's like... I, I bet I bet growing up in like the fucking 60s or 70s was just so much like calmer. <laughs> I don't know about better, but just calmer. I could ask my parents and see what it was like, get some insight. Like, yeah, how was it like just going back your day, just chilling, you know? Dude, like you, you had to send letters to people. You had to yeah. send, you had to write a fucking letter and send it in the mailbox. You had to just wait places, and just look around. Yeah, just yeah, dude. Like, yeah, you didn't, you couldn't just pull out your phone and start looking at shit when you're bored. Yeah, you had you to know, make plans. You had to occupy yourself. You had to, you had to, to, yourself, you know? <laughs> you had to do stuff. Like what? Oh my god! I would just like, like olden days of like waiting people, you know, when I was like still like eight to thirteen or whatever before this whole like shift in um. Uh, when, like, generations happened, I just sit there and just chill and enjoy the scenery and just appreciate yeah. the flowers. That's like, one of my favorite things fun. about, like, one of my favorite things, like, being in, like, elementary school and middle school is, like, knowing where your friends are at. Like, you see all the bikes in front of the house and everything. You're like, yeah. oh, everybody's over here. Everyone's at Brian's house right now. Yeah. And you just pull up. Dude, you had to, you had to call your friend's home phone number, have their weird, like, relative or somebody answered the phone you have no idea who you're talking to you're like hey is is sean on is it sean there can i talk to him i want to go play mm -hmm. with him you know i want, I want to like, go ride who bikes is this? around yeah who is this? <laughs> who is this? i dude i developed an irrational fear of answering the phone when uh when i grew up i got out of it after uh a, you know a little bit of adulthood but um 
holy shit, having to answer the phone, like the home phone at my place and having no idea who's a, who I'm about to like encounter <laughs> was terrifying as a kid. Yeah. I don't even answer oh. my phone anymore. Anybody who needs to talk to me can <laughs> just text me. It's chill. It's all right. It's Some chill. more deeper memories have just popped up of like olden days of phoning. So like this is before caller ID like was a big thing. This yeah. is like late nineties, early two thousands. Oh, like yeah. if we got like a, a quote unquote sales call or like a scam call during dinner. Like my parents are like they're but they're both like well established smart people, but they're also fucking trolls in their own rights as well. So we get a call from like you know a, a salesperson like, hey, you want to buy a you you want to buy a sundial or whatever the fuck they're trying to sell or they're trying to scam us, and be like yeah, let me just go get them real quick. And one thing we knew about like sales calls back then is like they weren't allowed to hang up the phone. So what they do is like, yeah, let me just go like, you know, get to the owner of the house. They leave the phone live and just put it down face down while we're eating dinner and just leave it there. And they just never hang up for like an hour on end. <laughs> Deep down the sales representative, if he was just like kind of like forced into that work or like he just he's getting paid by the hour, which who knows? Maybe it was just commission based, but he's probably like, thank God, just don't mm -hmm. fucking have to do anything for an hour. <laughs> yeah, who knows how it was being done, but like they, they do stuff like that, like. They tell me like, yeah, if this happens, just fuck with them. Fuck it. Yeah. Like, yeah. like they shouldn't be like calling our phone number trying to sell shit. Like, we don't yeah. need that. Like, you can see it as like me, but at the same time, like, I don't need like a volcano insurance. Whatever the fuck you're trying to sell, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's it's ridiculous how many I, I probably get like three or four spam calls a day on my phone. Yep. It's like three yep, or four pretty pretty consistently, and I'll even get like my voicemails of like people like trying to. Th oh, and I started getting. Um, this is like a few months ago. It stopped, luckily, or maybe I just blocked the sender completely. But I was getting like Walmart emails saying like, "Oh, you your iPad's arriving soon. Thanks for your purchase from Walmart." I'm like, I didn't fucking order anything, so I, it's like clearly this is a scam. But it's kind of worrying because i've like seen some things of like even if you were to open up and i i've even gotten like text messages saying like oh like your bank is just closed or whatever and i've even heard that if you open up the text message not even click any links or do anything but like that can hack your device or something now i'm gonna go to bed with uh <laughs> with worries and stuff dude also you know what's crazy is your phone is non-stop listening to you your phone, yeah, true. your phone is. Let me let me grab my phone real quick. I've had a boner for five hours and it won't go down. <laughs> uh, how do I fix this? Anyone there? Yo, FBI, can you can you dude, help me out on this one, dude? Your phone Just is. Have to listen to that. Your phone is nonstop listening to you because this has happened so many times. Right now, my phone's lying right next to me on my desk. After a Sebe cast, I will have talked about a few things. And I swear to God. I am now targeted on every advertising thing of something I talked about briefly. Oh, like yeah. I, you're getting laxative ads. Oh, 100% I will. I will. Yeah, I will. And um, probably some other shit as well. And, uh, yeah, it's it's actually – I don't know because I'm actually not that terrified about it. I, like I, would, I could say like I'm terrified, but like I really just don't give a fuck be honest it's just far too much information for any human to be able to go through <laughs> so i just i just don't fucking care at this point <laughs> simply just care less like, like should i care because if i care i'm gonna just uh, that's another thing added to the list of cares god damn it yeah honestly it's just a case of just simply just care less yeah yeah basically and life just becomes easier so let me ask you phelps how what what is the difference between your 20s and your 30s now that you're in your 30s okay so i guess like for anyone wondering like phelps is my irl name it's what like a lot of people called me it's what a lot of my ogs called me like say based know me long enough to the point where like he just knew that's how i was addressed and if i catch you call me that i will ban you yeah but <laughs> yeah motherfuckers <laughs> yeah don't fucking thinking so 20s and 30s 20s you're like more immune to like hangovers and stuff like that like it's very much more like a party so like early 20s is more of a party stage than like your early 30s are for example like you can still go out and do that it's just like it's less commonplace or like less like socially accepted or whatever the hell 
you want to call it. Like, you also go out to, like, parties. Like, Halloween parties, everyone gets fucking wrecked in their 30s. Like, nowadays, like, when I'm going out to one, like, you know, several months from now, like, everyone's going to get fucked up and trashed for it. But the only difference is, like, you're not in school. You're, like, well-established, like, a career. You have, like, an income. If you're, like, you know, a human being, you have a 401k. You've got everything else set up. You've got your all your ducks in the pond. Maybe not in a row, but they're all in the water, at least. But, like, you're not... Maybe you're broke, but you're not, like, broke, broke. You're not, like, how do I put this? So, like, early 20s, you're still in university and stuff like that, and you just don't really have money like that. Like, you work a nobody job so you can afford a 12-pack of brew and, like, a dub sack and a Dutch Master on the weekend. Like, that's that's what your bank account basically is in those days, unless you had, like, rich parents that just funnel you money. And if you had that, I'm jealous of you, and I will forever be jealous of you that you had that. But, like, once you get to 30s, like, there is much less to worry about, but there's, like, other things to worry about that are different. But, like, those kinds of things aren't there. It's just you're more well-established in life, and you can kind of just, like, coast with it, you know? That, that, that's really all I can say about it. It's, what like, about, you're, you're basically, like, lined up in life at that point. So what about, like, mentality? Like, I feel like in your 20s, it feels like that is your life. Almost like at least this is how I've maybe I'm projecting a little bit. I probably am, but I I think like when I was 24, 25, it seemed like this is just what life is. Mm. Like because you get out of childhood and it's like oh shit, like this is how the real world works. It's never going to get any better. <laughs> it's like this is just life now because you're an adult. But I've heard a at lot least... of people that enter their 30s and 40s, 30s especially, and they realize like oh like. Yeah, 20s were like a dark time. It's like where you're just f still figuring out yourself, and then 30s is just like, oh, you, oh like no, you I said, you had care a, less. I definitely had a year period that I preferred didn't happen in my life, and I, I call that the uh, the dark period, I guess you want to call that. <laughs> I prefer that didn't happen, but it also like taught me a couple of things at the same time, so it was like good that it happened, but like I also wish it didn't happen. Mm. But yeah, it's more so, it's more so like, they're quote unquote the best years of your life because you have zero cares in the world. But like once you're at your thirties, you do have cares in the world, but you're like you're more mature enough to the point where like you can handle like what life is giving out for you and you're mm -hmm. able to like separate your work from your play to where how do I put this? At least like right now, like let's say like Sundays and Mondays are like the two days where I don't really do anything and I kinda just do whatever. So, like, Sunday, I just completely leave work mode, for example. I leave, like, that workaholic, like, mindset I was talking about earlier. And I just get to enjoy myself. I, I do whatever the hell I want myself. Maybe I have a couple of drinks, like, late at night. Maybe I'm just, like, you know, out bike riding. I'm just, like, you know, laying horizontal on the beach or whatever the fuck. And I, I can just shut my brain off. You, you more so, like, manage how to, like, you more so, like, understand how to manage, like, your mental. Yeah. As also, like, as well as, like, balancing your life as well. Because, like, you're at the point in your life where you you should be, like, you know, established with your career. Or maybe, like, you know, you did school late because for reasons, like, you, you just, like, worked. You didn't know your career path. But, like, you're just more established. Like, you're more mentally there in yeah. life. There are things that are going to make you, like, worry about stuff. But you can handle it better than you did ten years ago. Yeah, you know? that's that's it. It's like you can handle. You understand yourself more, and you can handle situations. Exactly more. that. Yeah. It's like it's not like you should be worried about hitting your thirties. Like, oh my god, I'm getting old. You should be excited to hit there, in different ways. Just because, like, it, it means like you're hitting a. You're gonna look back at this like when you're seventy and be like, yeah, my thirties was my golden age. You know. Yeah. 20s see, was my ratchet age, 30s my golden age. See, I've heard, um, I've read this online that your best, the best time in life is 50. Really? Yep. And mm -hmm. they're basing it off of people that have lived an entire life. So it, the, you wouldn't say like, oh, now that you're 50, you just think you have the best time of your life. No, it's like even people that are 70 and 80 years old say, yeah, 50 was the best time in my life. Because I don't know, I don't. But there's some reasons for it, but it's basically just like you have everything together, you understand who you are, and you've lived half a life, and you just feel more wise, and you're still kind of healthy. It's interesting to think about. Yeah. So that that makes me like feel good, understanding like 
there's still a lot more to look forward to. And then after 50, it's all fucking downhill. But yeah. Yeah, it just all yeah, goes th- to shit. Thanks for, thanks for reminding me. I've only got 17 years to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I appreciate that. That shit rules. I'm fine with getting older. I don't fucking care at this point. Yeah. I want to have like both of you feel because like you're both uh you're both turning 28 this year so you're like reaching like you know the end of the line for like the 20s era yeah in your life and stuff like that so like i don't know like how like your early 20s was like your early uni years your like you know party years and stuff like that and like how you're like getting into 30s now like obviously like those days are like well like long since past it's, it's just weird because like i thought my life would go completely differently as do probably a lot of people um but the thing I kind of worry about is like lifelong friendships and stuff, like real friendships. It, like I think that's something I actually do worry about because I feel like I didn't uh, n- like nurture, or I don't know if that's the right word, but just like nurture my friendships that I had in college and things like that. And so then when people's lives move on inevitably, and then, you know, isolating yourself and playing RuneScape all day, <laughs> doing all that. Like, sometimes I wonder, I'm like, huh, like, and then, and we also live in the technological age post COVID and all this other shit. So people are just like, I don't know. It's just weird. Like people don't leave their places as often because there's, you can get everything delivered to you and you can live your life indoors. You have the internet. And so I think that's part of my worries is like getting older is just traditional friendships and uh things that i felt like i would just have growing up and i just realized like yeah i I mean i got friends and stuff but it's not like how i thought it would be i don't know i'm sorry to make a sad point on that but it's just like no i I can give you like some enlightenment on that in a certain way so like uh one of my longest friends uh, Casey, he got married back in October, like right after uh, TwitchCon, and this is like the main reason I couldn't go there because he like requested that all of us be clean of COVID for his wedding because his mother is like very susceptible to dying to it. Mm. So, uh, he's been my friend since I was I want to say what year is it? Yeah, since I was like eight years old, and I've been like le- like friends with him ever since, like best friends with him. And anytime, like, we're apart from each other for, like, you know, extended periods of time, we can just not talk for, like, three years and then just immediately pick up exactly where we left off. Yeah. Like, that's what lifelong friendships, like, built around. Like, if you've got something like that, like, you've got a good one. And, like, more of your friendships than you think are probably like that, where you just be like, hey, it, it's, like, been a while. Like, you know, how you been doing, man? Like, uh, I, I gotta know, like, you know, it's been a while, like, everyone's caught up in their own thing, like, we all got our own lives now, like, you got your wife, I got my girl, like, you know, I've got my side piece, whatever the fuck you got going on, <laughs> and, like, I, I just want to make sure, like, you know, everything's all good, like, I just want to catch yeah. up, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, like, me and Casey do that, like, all the time. Like, after the wedding, we didn't talk to each other, like, after he got married for probably, like, four months, and then... Actually, maybe, maybe like five months. And like, we eventually like rekindled again recently because of a, like a video of the game that came out called Advance Wars Reboot Camp. And it was like a game series we played a lot, like back in the early 2000s for the Game Boy. And like, it got a remake and we started like talking a lot again, like after that shit came out. And just like random things just make us like talk again as if we were like nine or 10 years old. Damn. Yeah. But like, that's what like a lot of friendships will like turn into when you get older is like, you're not going to talk to people every single day because like, you'll have your life partner. You have like, you know, your own career path and your own life to worry about. Like you can't worry about like your friend group of like 10, 20 or whatever people and like talk to them every single day, unless you're like, you know, you're a social butterfly, in which case I'm jealous of you. But yeah, like <laughs> most people just have their own thing going on where they're just like, We'll, we'll catch up like once in a while, like, you know, maybe get some coffee, go get some pancakes, go get like, you know, some, some comfort food, whatever the hell, uh, catch up on the meal. You know, maybe we'll talk for like, you know, a couple of weeks and be like, yeah, like, you know, we got to get back to our own lives and stuff, but mm-hmm. like the friendship's still very much there. That's just how it works, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me ask you guys. Well, here, let's, let's finish 42's question. He has one that I'm not even going to talk about because he says ideas. <laughs> He says ideas for uh, engaging yet difficult content. I'm literally just going to skip that because it's irrelevant. We're just never going to get it. Um, this is, we're going back to words. Yeah, we were just on an IRL tangent. Content that oh, should yeah. be deleted. We'll probably go back to the IRL right after this. 
Delete the sandstone grinder. Delete Bob. Yes. Make the hardcores cry. Delete monkey room. I yeah, agree with that. But that's like too obvious. Yeah. Uh, delete, delete the chaos third, altar. Delete third party Thank clients. You. Thank you, whale. Thirty party clients. Bring Ooh. it back to the days of vanilla. I played on vanilla for. Is, I I have like just recently passed playing on third party clients longer than having played on vanilla. If vanilla was the only way to play the client, we might have different ways of like what like content gets voted into the game. I'm just saying, like voting results might look very very different, you know. Go so you it. know this part of uh, the monkey like subquest of RFD where you got to cook a snake. Let me pull it up. There you go. Yeah. So like. I just boost the uh, the matured beer to get 70 because fuck training skills. And every time I do this shit, I prepare five snakes. Like, the last three accounts I've done this, I prepare five snakes, and every single time so far, the first one successfully cooks. I don't burn any of them. <laughs> I don't know how, it just does that. Like, I'll burn probably, like, three right here. There you go. But, like, the first one, like, always just works for some reason. I don't Ooh, know. Cooked. Oh, nice. my God. I don't no. Bruh. Dude, you're fucking... I... Let him cook. Bro, they, bro, they baby mode did this. They, the, bro, they're just pandering to the fucking plebs. I swear, that's yeah. fucked up. Yeah, you know what? Man, this game sucks. I'm logging into Gaia Online or something like a better game. Gaia Online, holy shit! What a throwback. Yeah, that that's like one of the like four prevalent games. Like high school was like RuneScape, Gaia Online, Neopets, and World of Warcraft. That was the four. And you Tame played Town. one of those. <laughs> nobody played Toontown. Nobody, nobody played Toontown. Nobody, nobody <laughs> fucking cool. Nobody played Toontown. No, I didn't know anybody yeah. that played Toontown. Yeah. Nobody knew anybody that played Toontown. <laughs> <laughs> you log in, you finally get your fucking parents' credit card information. Log in, world goddamn empty. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> okay. For real, for real. Did you ever play yeah, um Virtual Magic Kingdom? VMK? Uh, did you ever play Club Penguin? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I played Club Penguin for a little bit. I played Club Penguin. Oh, and then there was this game, um, Millsbury.com. That was like the fucking cereal box game. No fucking clue. Yeah, that was a, that was, I'm trying to think. I, I think I have fond memories of that, but I don't remember it being that good actually, which is weird. Yeah, probably. Definitely a children's game. I was a child back then, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Frank asks, cold one, when consuming beers, do you prefer quality or quantity? What's your go-to beverage? Okay, so that depends entirely on the setting. So, like our time in Base Tennessee, I'd always go for Miller Lite because light beers are good for, like, you know, long-term drinking. Like, if you're starting the night out early... But you will like want something to go at all times and you don't want to pass out early, you don't want to like, you know, knock out early or whatever. Light beers are go too. But if you're like, you know, chilling with a couple people, you're not really drinking that much. Like craft beers, IPAs, like something bit stronger. Even something like like five percent, six percent, like even like Heineken, Modelo, or like uh what's the other one? That we go in our shallow lad, like one of them, like you know, like not a light beer. It it depends entirely on the setting, like where you're at. Yeah. Like right now, like I picked up a a, a toll pack of like some high light like a variety pack, and they're all like five to like eight percent. But I'm still on those in the cast, for example. But if it's like a party or something, you just get a light beer. If you're going to the beach or something, you get a light beer. Okay. Whale, big fan of the UIM content. What got you to start up the UIM and what's your go to breakfast? Uh so I played a little Iron Man, right? And then I did a thousand solo raids without getting a Dragon Hunter crossbow or a Tebow. And then they nerfed the blowpipe. <laughs> so I started playing a UIM and AFKing Max. Uh, breakfast, shit. I just make breakfast tacos. Just every day I make fucking breakfast tacos. It's the classic. You can't go wrong. Crunchy or soft shell? What the fuck is wrong with you? Soft. The hell? <laughs> then why did you guys make crunchy shells? I, I didn't. Okay, well, for breakfast okay. is different. Breakfast is different than dinner. I was I'm I was curious a... because like I always use I, I I'm I'm a soft shell taco kind of guy. 
So when I saw the hard shell tacos, I'm like, this is like the most American K Kona fucking tacos I've ever had. I still enjoyed them. Thank you guys for cooking. Yeah, I've never been a crunchy enjoyer unless it's like yeah. straight up a tostada. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, then he asks, Sater, why is the Legend of Dragoon actually the best game ever? Fucking A, man. This guy's a legend. Yeah, Legend of Did you guys ever play Legend of Dragoon on PlayStation One? I've heard of it, but I never played it. Four All disc. Right. Four disc game on the PlayStation. It literally took it, it probably takes you know a good 50 to 100 hours depending on how slow of a gamer you are to complete it and it was just fantastic fantastic storyline turn-based combat just incredible and it was the greatest game still to this day like I've, I've beaten it like eight or nine different times last time i beat it was in college shit's fucking the greatest game of all time better than runescape no, if you're saying like turn-based combat, like a good story, you ever played Fire Emblem Six before for the Game Boy Advance? No, I think I've heard oh. it though. Yeah, that it was only originally released in Japan, but it was like American modded carts, and you just like get a ROM for it nowadays. Dude, but if you want like a really, really good storyline for like turn-based combat, that one is like S tier. See, this is this is part of the thing that makes me sad is like so many of these games, like I could never get somebody to enjoy legend of dragoon in adulthood if they didn't play it as a kid it's so much so much of like the enjoyment we get from old classic games is a nostalgia yeah so, exactly that it's the same yeah. thing with people having this cringe i'm sorry cringe obsession with avatar of the last airbender i fucking that show sucks it's for kids and everybody <laughs> says it's the greatest thing on earth and I'm like, dude, you have to understand it's only the greatest thing on earth because you watched it as a child. Like, that's the only reason. It's not actually good. Like, if you watch it as an adult for the first time ever, it's horrible. Every single person that didn't watch it as a kid that tries to watch it thinks it's horrible. So I can attest to this because I'm in the uh, in the boat of people that watched it as an adult for the first time. I never watched it as a kid. And my most recent ex uh, convinced me to watch it with her, and I was not really the biggest fan of it <laughs> it's boring and she she fucking hated me for not liking it i was like listen i'm sorry <laughs> I don't it's understand just... it's nostalgia based holy shit yeah i just never watched it so yeah it's I i'm mean, sorry you, people you could say the same kind of thing for like a lot of other shows but then there's like some shows that like came out years ago that are actually good like that like another i guess like quote-unquote anime because like some people consider avatar to be an anime like yu yu haka show I think was like really good for like old anime. It was a good shojin, mm. but it's also like I think for like a lot of people, it's like the only anime some people watch. In like my case, it was like one of the four that I've watched. But I still think it was a good show. Yeah, like I enjoyed it. Like I've watched it nowadays. It's probably different, but I think it still holds up today in some way. Like if I watch Jackie Chan Adventures or Samurai Jack, I would think this is the fucking greatest thing ever because I just have like that nostalgia just of me going home and from school and watching it like fuck yeah i mean it's so much yeah, just it's samurai jack so oh my god, god. <laughs> i love that shit yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but again it's the it's the same thing with legend of dragoon although i want to say that people would seriously enjoy it if they like jrpgs and classics i i just can't see it ever slapping as hard as it slaps for me because i played it as a child and it was the greatest so yeah yeah. Um, 87H asks, who are your favorite YouTube content creators outside of OSRS? And who are your favorite up-and-comers inside the OSRS community on YouTube? Whale, you go first. Um, I, I prepared. Uh, so outside of uh, RuneScape, there's this dude whose videos I watch. He puts out like one video a year, but it's always like some really fucking cool shit. Uh, he's called like Tom7. Mm. Uh, where he just does really useless things with generally pertaining to technology. Like he, uh, he like made, he like played fucking like super Mario world on an NES, but like not through emulate. I don't remember exactly how the fuck he did that, but 
I don't know. He he just always does like these really cool things. He has it's, it's like a fucking like a doctorate and sort of fucking dude. Um, but yeah, really good stuff there. Highly recommend. And then up and comers, fucking shout out Glim, uh, the Moral Percent Iron Speed Run, Max Cape thing. Glim's the I homie. Just, I just heard Moral Percent. Yeah. So like no alts basically. Yeah. Moral, moral, moral. Percent. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be oh, honest, we did get the idea from it, so it's technically not wrong. I understood. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's really good. And shout out Glenn, that's the homie. Yeah, shout out Morals. Yeah, G W E M with an with an M. G W E M. Off to off to search them on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, she's cool. What about you? A cold one. All right, I gotta look through like my sub, like the people I'm like sub to on here. So like some are uh, some just release music videos, some just release the content for different games. So if I had to look at so there's like a few league creators I follow and everything like that. Uh, one that I follow a lot is like entirely biased because he mains a champion that I main on league. He's called Minish Cap One, and like we're we're in each other's like streams once in a while. But he's like a singe player, but he'll like show off like you know troll builds. Good builds, crap builds, etc. He just he's a one trick for the champion. That's the only thing he plays. Um, outside of him, and outside of league, there are I guess like two other people I mentioned. It's like one is somebody who just like makes remixes for like old video games, and I've used like some of his music in like some of my videos as well because it just sounds good. Uh, his name's MK Vaf. I think I've showed like Whale a couple of these uh, songs as well. Like ones that just so, go hard yeah. unnecessarily. Like just they just go hard for just no reason. I was like, yeah, it's just good shit. <laughs> like okay then, <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. There we go. And then the last one is a uh, it's like a Yu Gi Oh YouTuber uh, group, like a team of people called Team APS. And they just like sometimes they put out like just good U- like YouTube videos. There's like another one called uh, Team Samurai. Sometimes it depends on, like, you know, TikTok-like style, like, short videos. But, like, if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! fan, you like them, and if you're not a Yu-Gi-Oh! fan, then they're just, like, whatever to you. But I like them, so. I was like, the other people I would, like, mention that I, feel, like, follow on YouTube when I, f- I decide to open up the website. And OSRS? Uh, whoever I don't say is going to get mad at me, but the one person I do is going to be like, okay, he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's like too many people. There's too many people I follow on like old school RuneScape. You have I to guess say like I'll, I'll, Yeah, I'll have like a question after this. I'm going to put you in the hot seat right after this, Seder. But oh, fuck. If I, if I had to think like which old school content creator I like, as far as like creativity uniqueness and like I, I actually like just straight up enjoy the stuff they put out unironically i really have to give it to solo mission i i just yeah. do like there's a lot Absolutely. of practicality behind it but there's like enough uniqueness to the point where it doesn't stray too far from society you know it's just like there isn't like really a bad video he's ever put out like it's always enjoyable whenever i see like oh solo mission put up a video i'll click on it i had a good time watching that yeah, it was really cool meeting him. I've been watching his videos since like 2018, mm-hmm. and yeah, they, like he was one of my favorites back then, and is still one of my favorites to this day. Like I yep. always watch his videos. He's still holding. He's yeah. still very much holding that. So yeah, there, there you go. There's uh, there's my people okay. that I like. I guess I'll answer this. Um. In regards to, like, normal YouTubers that I watch, I mean, I don't know. I It's hard for me because, honestly, I've kind of just leaned on just watching home videos that are, like, recommended to me now. I don't know if there's, like, an f- absolute favorite. But if I had to say one, I would, pr- I would probably say Fiction Beast. Fiction Beast is just, like, I, as I said earlier when I was, like, watching, like, a bunch of, like, philosophers and stuff from random shit in the past few centuries uh fiction beast is like a dude that just compiles like a bunch of like old literature and philosophies and all these other things and like compiles it into a really compelling like narrative and just has a bunch of visuals for the whole thing and it's just really well done so it feels like you're learning a lot and it's just super highly entertaining so i'd have to give my shout out to fiction beast um in regards to old school 
Honestly, mm. I'm a huge fan of. I got. I, I just gotta say it. Like I love rambles and podcasts, and so if I were to give one, it'd probably be to Real Homie Hour or Base After Dark. Just because, like, when I see them upload, it's like I click them because it's my long form content that I get to enjoy because there's not much of it. So and any rambles, like if if uh, like Autumn Elegy post a random odd ramble oh, yeah. I'm all about it I, yeah. I love just the classic ramble style videos because it's just super casual you get to hear something raw it's unedited on un, it's just not fancy at all and it's just talking and i, I enjoy that so it's did you ever end up, you uh... just like listen to and just like kind of sync with so i like rambles and stuff like that and podcasts too. i think it's why a lot of people just like enjoy just vibing with that kind of thing you know yeah i'm a huge fan yeah, did you ever end up checking out the uh, oh, Mayfield and Friends podcast yet? I have not yet. Damn, that's yeah. You just put me on the spot. Fuck. Yeah, no. I mean, it's it's real small podcast, but a lot of cool people on it. Like uh, Gwen was on it. That's how I found out about it. Yeah, I'll uh, have to actually give it. You know, a listen. Yeah, yeah. A lot of familiar names on there. If you just like are yeah. aware of the community. That's what we need. In fact, I, I maybe I'll even maybe I'll take it upon myself to just discover all the long forms, sort of like raw OSRS content, and like compile it and like almost just be like, here's my top picks of like that kind of style of videos. Because I feel like there's just not enough. Because those videos generally don't do as well, you know, just yeah. like long form content or any sort of ramble style videos. That's just not what most mainstream OSRS viewers want to see. But for those that do, I think it would be really cool to have like a, an actual video source where it's like you can see how many there really are. Because I've, I've, you know, there's tons that I, I haven't discovered myself. So, okay. Um, Dirt Nerd says, eat pant whale. And dear Chungus, can you please explain why you can do if thinking is option for big and catacombs of yeah, I think so too. First, I got to put you in the hot seat real quick. So don't think you're dodging my question so fast. So <laughs> since there are hundreds, if not thousands of notable, like, you know, faces, personalities, people in the old school RuneScape community, can you confirm with undeniability that after 116, say, Baycast, that whoever you haven't had on, you hate their fucking guts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I haven't had you on the say Baycast yet, I hate your guts. I, I never want you on the cast. No. Yeah, thank you. Thank I, you for clearing that up yeah, for us. I, yeah, I, literally, literally this is this is the episode that like <laughs> just shows <laughs> just it, it's such a bad representation because people are just begging for certain guests to come on. Like, please get this person on. And in the meantime, this week I get you and Whale on for the third time. Hell and yeah, happy to be here. And I'm like, fuck everybody else. I'm just getting. I want to talk to my boys, a cold one and whale. This is my uh, fucking or, podcast, yeah. yo. Fuck that Hemi's dude. Yeah. Fuck that nine ring guy. <laughs> fuck oh, that yeah. other people you ain't had on that. Yeah. I can't think of the no, names okay. off the top of my head. So, fuck so, them all. So I haven't yeah. actually stated this on a cast. I feel like so when I first started the Save a Cast, I just thought it was amazing to get anybody on. Like if anybody wanted to talk, it was just cool. And then I made the mistake of uh, saying like, yeah, if anybody ever wants to come on the cast, just send me a DM. Not not to say like you will be on it, but it would be cool to know like who would like to be on it. And then I got a bunch of DMs from random people and just like just random people would be like, oh, like I want to come on and stuff. And it was so awkward at the time because it's like I realized that's actually not what I wanted. I didn't want to have this pressure of having just anybody on or having this weird pressure of like feeling like I need to say yes to anybody that asks because I, I don't want to let people down. I, I, I want to talk to everybody. But what I discovered probably a year ago is I just can't fucking take it anymore. And I'm just going to run the podcast as I want to run it. And I just want to talk. Go. I just want to talk to who I want to talk to. And if I invite you on, it's because I truly want to talk to you. And, um, I only no, do one currently I only do one podcast a week. So it's going to just take a long time to get through to the peak cuz there's still tons of people I want to talk to, including Hemis, believe it or not. Yes, yes, Jimbo. And I want to talk to Jimbo too. <laughs> Fuck it. 
Um, why are you why are you talking directly to Jimbo? Why does Jimbo have to be involved? In he's this? probably not even listening to this. No, he definitely Dude. is. And if nah, he is, fuck. Listen, Jimbo, if you listen to this, fuck you. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> Yo, Jimbo, if you listen to this, that potato recipe was fire. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I do want to talk to people, but I think it's better if I just run it my own way. And it's way less stressful, and I just feel better about doing the whole thing. As soon as there's some awkward pressure of me just talking to people that people tell me to talk to, it's just not going to hit the same. Yeah, we just love giving you crap because it's funny. Yeah. No, but I feel, like, I feel like I needed to address that almost. Like, I'm just going to... Do my thing. Hopefully that. As soon as you feel like you need to address something, you've already lost. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I. Yeah. I got a problem with addressing too many things. Yeah, addressing it three and a half hours in when everybody's still listening. Yeah, yeah. You should, <laughs> you should, you should be trying to dress some bitches. <laughs> All right. Type banana down in the comment section if you're still listening to this shit. We'll see who types banana. Um, yes. So, what do you guys think about simulation theory? Dog, what? Yeah, what do you think about we're living in a simulation? I yeah, believe it. Shit. I 100% believe it. Y'all you, you, seen Truman Show, obviously. Yeah. And if you haven't, then you're sheltered. Yeah. Are you sheltered, Will? Did you watch it? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, good. <laughs> Just like... Yeah. It was a good, mo it was a good movie. Yeah, and like... It was. It was. General rule of thumb, if it Thanks. didn't come out on VHS, I probably haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure that was like right at the end of the VHS era, so just barely made to it. To be honest, I didn't watch Truman right. Show until I was like 24, so. Right, how, about, uh, how about Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind? No. I watched that once when I was like a teenager and did not understand it. Bro, that movie was such a mind fuck. Yeah. You know what was a mind I fuck? I barely remember. The prestige mind fucked me for like the first three times I watched it. I don't know what the fuck that is. You never watched The Prestige? No. Nah. Bruh. You got Hugh Jackman. You got fucking Christian really? Bale. Scarlett Johansson. Oh, uh, you see? The, yeah, this is DVD era. The I fuck know. do you expect? Fuck. Fuck. It was 2006, I think. So it was my, yeah. yeah, it definitely wasn't VHS, but yeah. Um. So why do you think a cold one? I don't think. Yeah, me neither. You, you're all AI. You're all AI <laughs> no, okay. So, I kind of like I get the idea of the simulation theory. How like, I mean, if you looked at the end of Men in Black One, you could see like another indirect theory. How like our universe is just like the contents of a marble, and extraterrestrial beings are just playing with like marbles, like you know, like a game of marbles. You ever played that before? Like we're we're just inside a marble. And as far as, like, the size of our galaxy is, like, insignificant size compared to, like, the contents of that marble. So I get that. Like, I, I get what people are thinking, but I think you should probably put the crack pipe down <laughs> before you, like, start uh, messing with their brains like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, maybe deal with the reality that you're given as opposed to trying to <laughs> fucking <laughs> explain it away, you know? I, I can see it happen, though. Like, I can definitely see, like, alternate universe theories and like marble universe theories or like simulation theory. I, I can definitely see that going on to think like, what if we're just in a simulation, like exactly yeah. that Truman show or that episode of, uh, of Rick and Morty or something like that. So I could totally see that being a thing. So I let think me, like parallel, yeah. no, I think like parallel universe, like theory, like could be a thing, but like I think a lot of people, yeah, I think a lot of people think of it as like, I, I made this decision instead of this decision, and therefore there was a diversion there. But really, it would like if it were to be a thing, it would be at more of an atomic level than the it's like it's a very human centric uh, way of thinking to assume that your decisions would like split or like the human action splits the fucking the timeline and all that when in reality, like it's just like. We're not that important, man. We just we just got lucky and we're out here. I mean, so, it depends on like what the level of like your decision making is. Like, if it's you deciding to get the chicken nugget instead of a burger, that's probably not changing much. <laughs> but if it's you deciding to like you know not wage war against like Louisiana from Alabama, then maybe yeah, that does change something. 
Yeah, and see, that comes down to, like, atomic level. Exactly that. Yeah. So, do you think it's possible for us humans to understand why we're here? Like, do you think that we can ever know, like, pure truth? Or are, is it always sure. a paradox? It's not so much a paradox. I, I think it's just something about like you know cellular development to the point where like we have sustainable life that has just grown and i think we just just not think about it because like oh we, we're gonna get a solution like oh this is how we were created maybe we just sh shouldn't think about that <laughs> yeah. yeah we don't need that knowledge because then we'll just re try and replicate it and then we already are replicating not, it yeah we're trying to replicate not like something we need we're trying to replicate AI like we haven't watched the movie iRobot to see that's like not a good idea, you know? We're like, yeah, that's a good I idea. But like, you know, scripture. We got to remember iRobot. Yeah, yeah. We, we like, like we've already we canceled uh, what's his name? We've already canceled Will Smith, so like he's not going to save our asses. <laughs> so we probably shouldn't fuck around with AI, you know? Okay, well, like, I man, fuck seen you guys. IRobot. Really? It was DVD era. <laughs> I swear there was like it was on VHS as well. Oh my god! It might have been. <laughs> this guy has not watched a movie since 2002. Bro, I, I literally have. It. I like, still have a VHS collection to this day. I can post it in the chat. And legendary. We still, still use the VHS rewinder in like my parents' house too. That little rewinding machine. Just yeah, loud as shit. I oh, remember yeah. like old fucking Blockbuster. They had like a little sign yeah. on like the back of the case that said, "Be kind, please rewind." Yep. yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude. Ooh. Oh my god. Now, okay. Now I just feel old. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that shit was. Yeah, no, no problem. Dude, I still remember getting our first DVD player. That was weird. Man. Where's the fucking VHS collection? I don't know. It's in here somewhere. I got some good shit on VHS. There was like a brief point in time from like, like 2012 to 2016 ish, where you could just go to Goodwill, find a bunch of good fucking movies, and they were fifty cents each. Shit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The Just days. launched it. It is loading. Oh my god, dude! I love looking at stuff like this. Yeah, you yeah. That is the, the first thing I see is just Kill Bill, Kill Bill on the top left. That's the first thing that just stands out to me. Oh yeah. Uh, do Pokemon movies too? Two copies of Fight Club. Man's One's fucking living a life. Oh, one, one of those is in Spanish. <laughs> One's an ESP. Let's fucking Wait, go. where is this? Am I seeing am I supposed to be seeing this? Pass it on. I, yeah, I posted it in the chat. It hasn't like updated on I haven't PC seen shit yet. yet. I don't know. Maybe wait just for, like, wait for it, wait for it. Mobile. I don't think anything is fucking showing up, I'll be honest. Yeah, I got I got two copies of the cat from outer space. One of them sealed. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> one of them sealed. How much does that go yeah. for, you bet? Not very much. Not a lot of people have seen The Cat from Outer Space. Dude. It's a good fucking movie, though. The best Disney mm -hmm. movie of all time. Dude, did you see that video um, of somebody buying an originally sealed iPhone for like... Oh, like 40... I, think I, I think I saw that, but I didn't watch yeah, it. It was $40,000. Jesus Christ. Yeah, if you had a factory oh, sealed car. iPhone. Interesting. Forty thousand dollars. Like fuck. Why? What? What? What am I doing with myself? I gotta start collecting shit like that, and not opening it. Yeah, we're talking about a collection. Like I could have been a multi quadrillionaire or something. I did have a first edition Charizard way back in the day. Really? I had first. Yeah, I had first edition like started at Kaiba. First edition started at Yugi. Don't those go for like a million or something or like something or what's the what's the card that goes for like a million dollars? Is like does that have to be I don't fucking know. Oh, that's a Black Lotus, isn't it? That's Magic: The Gathering. Know. That's different. Yeah, I think that's the only card that like reaches. I thought there was a Pokemon area. card. I thought it was Charizard or something like first edition or something like that. Like but it, it, has to be PSA 10 maybe. Yeah. it has to be yeah, like I mean, untouched or something for that to be that ex or something like that. I don't know. All right, hang on. Yeah, We're gonna look stuff like right now. It ain't a million dollars yet. Okay. Still First edition Charizard PSA 10 is listed for 50,000, 340,000. Uh, 97 copies of PSA 10 Charizards is 21 million, apparently. Yeah, look uh, for Shadowless, though. That's the real. Shadowless? That's the real yeah, that's the real, real expensive one. Uh, 340,000. Yep. 
Yeah, that sounds about right. Jesus. Dude, I remember looking on eBay back in like 2003, 2002, and seeing Yu-Gi-Oh! or um, Exodia pieces for like 350 bucks, and I thought that was like the most crazy thing of all time. I need to know why this thing was like so. Like, obviously, it does a hundred damage in a TCG. Like back then, that was kind of fucking good. But like, goddamn, like we just decided this is going to be the most expensive thing in nerd history. Yeah, God, I remember like, buying my copy of Emerald for like sixty bucks and thinking, man, that was a lot. How much is Emerald now? Like probably at least twice that. Let's see. Oh my God! Oh, oh. Oh, what's the damage? Uh, okay, <laughs> nine rain, rain. Um, <laughs> anywhere between 160 to 250 on buy yeah. it nows. Yeah. Um, yeah. God damn. What was the first uh, Pokemon slash Yu Gi Oh card you guys ever owned? Fuck, it was one of the starter decks. Base set Tangela was the first Pokemon card I ever opened out of a base set pack when I was like eight or something. Pokemon, then, I, got, like, I got a binder of cards at a garage sale as a kid, or maybe a box. Of, yeah, no, it was like a box of just a bunch of random commons. I still remember my first ever pack of Yu Gi Oh cards. So, like, obviously, it was like Starter Deck Yu Gi Oh, Starter Deck Iba, but like the first booster pack I ever got was from Magic Ruler set. And the first thing I ever opened up with that, like the first hollow I ever got was Delinquent Duo. I looked at him like, it's not a monster. It's not a butt kicking monster. I thought it was like kind of meth for a card, but I still played it because it was shiny. And I find out today it's like one of those broken cards in existence. <laughs> and it's never coming off ban list. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it shows how fucking stupid I was as a kid. <laughs> Um, like, I also remember that stuff. Okay, Toby here on Twitter asks, what is your favorite Pokemon? Zatu. Umbreon. Damn, we're both Gen 2-ers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, Gen 2 is my favorite. Yeah. Boomer time. I think mine's Scyther. Scyther's Scyther sick. Shield. Yeah, Scyther's sick, yeah. so... I just and For no particular reason, I think it's just because, like, I watched... I don't know if you guys had this on VHS. It was, like... The Pokemon Vacation into Pokemon the movie with like or Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back. I never. I watched the movie in theaters. I rented the movies. It it had it had um some advertisements at the beginning like all VHS and it had a cat yeah. dog advertisement of like them fucking in the bathtub making like tidal waves and shit. I just that's so iconic to me. Holy shit. Man said right cat now. dog holy. <laughs> cat yeah. dog. I, lo I love to meet some cat dog. <laughs> oh good shit. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. Cat dog, courage, fucking Rocco. Some somebody that's listening Rocco's knows exactly what I'm talking about right now and they're gonna comment it. I hope they do. Pokemon We're vacation into Mewtwo. Mewtwo strikes back. It's fucking classic. Where Ash turns to stone and Pikachu starts crying and turns everybody. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, we all know. We all know that movie. I don't yeah, know. About yeah, the you all know it, of of That part I don't know. But the Ash turning into stone bullshit. Yeah, yeah everyone yeah, cried. Or, where men. That one's where, 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 where men cried. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't cry, then you're lying about it. <laughs> yeah. Basically. They, yeah. That was a fucking good movie, man. That was great. Yeah. I want to talk about sh shows that probably suck without the nostalgia factor. Fucking Pokemon, man. <laughs> that shit's probably ass if you didn't grow oh, up. Oh, dude, have you... Okay, listen. I actually liked Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was a kid, watching just random episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Holy mm -hmm. shit. Have you tried to watch episode one of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, I made it about halfway through the first season. <laughs> dude, it is horrible. It is horrible. Yeah, it's I might have bad. to go look that up. <laughs> dude, I might have to go is, give it a it, peek. It, no, no, dude, you will not be able to. It is the most cringe-inducing thing. It's worse than Harry Potter episode one. You say that now, but I'm gonna look at it and be like, "Oh, he just summoned you. He just top decked Yu-Gi-Oh. Damn, he's the best duelist ever." Like, <laughs> it, it's crazy. Like, how much he happens? Zodia. <laughs> dude, it's it's crazy how much happens in pilot episodes of things. Like, you don't expect much yeah. to happen, and then you're watching. You're like. Huh? Like, what? Fucking Yugi summoning Exodia episode one? Like, what the fuck is going on? He's the top deck. He's just the better player. 
I have four cards in my hand, no monsters and no spells and traps on the field. The only thing that save me is top decking the final piece of Exodia. I'm just simply better. Skill issue. <laughs> yeah, Dude, skill for issue. real. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's you know what's also crazy is Breaking Bad, the pilot episode of that. So much happens. Yeah. So much happens. I didn't realize that until I rewatched it like a year ago. Yeah, that's one of the few non VHS medias I've seen is Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. <sighs> They're the greatest. What what do you what do you think is better? Saul. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just really like Mike. So Yeah, Mike's fucking awesome. I can get you guys really mad at me. I have not watched a single episode of Breaking Bad. <sighs> yeah. See, this right. isn't even nostalgia factor. Like you can actually just enjoy it right now. Probably, yeah. yeah. If you want to watch it, it's good. It, like, it's one of those things that's like it's generally regarded as good, and it's actually good. It's so. really good, man. Good, good. It's yeah, really I, good. I recommend it whenever you get around to it. I'm kind of jealous that you yeah, haven't seen it. I wonder what it would be like to watch Better Call Saul first. I imagine that's kind of interesting. That would be that'd be interesting to to watch Breaking Bad after having seen Better Call Saul. I think my dad is doing that. Oh shit! Yeah, so yeah, it's good. There's like a good number of video games I wish you could just like play again with like no, uh, no like knowledge of them, and some shows I wish you could watch again with like no knowledge of them because they were just like that good. Yeah, yeah. that's why I'm glad. I assume I... Breaking Bad's probably like in that level. Yeah, I wish There's I could so wipe my memory. Pokemon games that I just haven't played, and I'm just like, oh, well, I get to play them for the first time at some point. That'll be cool. That's a cool feeling. Yeah. I like to have things in the back burner like that. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know. I have a problem with it, though. It seems like the more I put it on the back burner, cer certain things, like, I, I actually lose interest. Yeah. I mean, you it's got like, time. It's sucky. It's sucky that you I... You just pull the trigger and just do it. I know. There's a lot of games that, like, when I was really addicted to RuneScape, I remember thinking of, like, playing certain games. I was like, oh, that's going to be really fun when I get unaddicted. And now I have no interest. Yeah. Like, damn. That's kind of sucks. You need to just do it. Yeah. I don't know, though. I don't know if it'll hit the same. I mean, like, it won't. Something I've started doing recently, like, I made a, uh, like, a channel for redemption called, like, uh, Suggest Variety or, like, Request Variety. And it's, like, it's just a list of my video game library. It's like, okay, at the end of my oh. stream, if you're around, I'll continue playing this game while you're around and shit. And the first thing that got asked for was Zelda Twilight Princess. And I genuinely forgot how good this game was. That and was I've only played like a couple good, hours of it. That dude, was a good it's, game. On the Wii. Bro, right? it's so not yeah. Yeah, we just fucking so good. moving with the Wii sticks, the joystick and the Wii remote, just fucking riding your horse. Mm -hmm. That I part's kind really... of annoying, like having to aim some shit sometimes, but like I otherwise like yeah, it I know, like, like I know how it ends and everything, and I realize like how good the story is and how good the character development of the game is. I'm like, maybe I should see how uh, how like Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild is, just to see like how well they can hold up against the character development that like Twilight Princess had. Because like, holy fuck, like that game did really good with that aspect, and I feel like it's like a really underrated aspect about video games. Damn, dude, I, I'm like, I'm like genuinely right now considering playing Legend of Dragoon like on stream. Like that'd be fucking. I'm just thinking of like these classic games, like Twilight Princess. Was that that was great. I unfortunately I was never like a Zelda kid, quote unquote. I was more like a Crash Bandicoot, Spyro kid, like that kind of. Yeah, same. So, I've still never played a 3D Zelda game. Yeah, I I played you Twilight really Princess, should. but no, it's yeah, not like. One. It's just one of those things I get to enjoy for the first time at some point. A lot of, you'll like, have a, a great time with it. A big problem with uh, like actually like playing other games for me is I just straight up don't have a controller I can use. Like I really, really want to play uh, Super Mario World again and like start playing a few like uh, fun looking ROM hacks of uh, of it as well. But I just don't have a controller, and using a keyboard is just so fucking alien. Like it just it did, my brain does not fucking work. Get the PS4 controller Android. and then download DS4. Or yeah, I just need to get. Solved. I just need to get a controller at some point, but I don't have enough drive to like actually play other games to <laughs> invest in that right now. So I get that. Yeah. 
Dude, you know what game still goes really hard? Crash Bandicoot Warped. Is that the third, third one? one? Yeah, that's the third one. Yeah, that shit went fucking nuts. That one, dude, like, that is my childhood right there. Like, that is literally, like... I played the shit out of the second one. See, I never... I didn't own the second one. I had a friend that I had to go to to play that okay, one. yeah. That one was good. That one always seemed more intriguing to me. But I think it was just the simple fact that it wasn't my game. Like, I had to go to my friend's house to play it. Right. Yeah, it's the same thing with Guitar Hero 2. I was a Guitar Hero 3. Like, Guitar Hero 3 was my game. But I played Guitar Hero 1 and 2 at my friend's house beforehand. So those always feel like the more ancient, sort of, like, interesting Mm -hmm. versions of it. Because I just played the fuck out of Guitar Hero 3. I mean, like... I literally I I had, yeah, go for I it. I had like the first, yeah, I had the, I had one through three and the Aerosmith one. I'm I had, sure. yeah, Aerosmith, I had Metallica, I had Guitar Hero World Tour. Mm-hmm. Aerosmith Honestly, was pretty ass. What, what was? <laughs> Aerosmith. Three. Yeah. yeah the, the, I should have stopped at three. The problem with Guitar Hero Aerosmith, first of all, I actually liked Guitar Hero Aerosmith um, because it still kept true to just being classic Guitar Hero. Which I enjoyed. Yeah. I enjoyed that they didn't try to like go above and beyond with some weird shit. Uh, the problem is there was no incredibly difficult song, so it just felt like a it felt like TOA version of you know if Guitar Hero Three is like Tob, Guitar Hero <laughs> Guitar Hero Aerosmith. Is that like one the, for me was TOA. like just in like Aerosmith. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's also and it's just loaded with Aerosmith and yeah. Metallica was the same idea. I, I actually. It grew to like Metallica more because of Guitar Hero Metallica. Because the songs were just fucking just violent. Like, it's just, it felt good strumming a good Metallica song on that game. And I was already really good at Guitar Hero, so the whole game was like a breeze on Expert. It was fun. Mm. Yeah, I was never really good at it. I was just like good enough. (laughs) Did you ever five star to the Fire and the Flames? Yeah, I I, five starred it, yes. Because... Good, good, good. I, I, there's absolutely no way I could ever gold star that. Absolutely not. But I could, I could like, I, I was that nerd that would tap the intro, you know, strum once and then put both hands mm-hmm. on the frets. Yeah, that's the only way you clear it, though. Like putting your left hand on fucking green. Yeah. No, I would, no, no, I would do it the way, though, where I'm actually clicking um, the, the first three with my left hand and then the blue and orange with my right hand. Yeah, you had to do that. Otherwise, yeah. like, there's no other way you could really go about it reasonably. So you just have insanely quick fingers. It's so hard, though. Yeah. No, you're, you're doing it like that. Otherwise, you're just trolling. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. A lot Dude, of throwbacks. We're taking, like, so many trips down memory fucking lane. That's what you get for bringing on two fucking boomers. Boomers, I know. Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Envy asks, at what point did Whale realize the mustache was part of his brand and he had to keep the meme going? I mean, like, I don't know. I grew, I grew the mustache, like, um, a few months into COVID. And I don't know. It, it just, like, just to, like, see if I could. And then I did, and it actually came out pretty well. So I just kind of kept it. And then I had it for, like... <laughs> probably at least a year before I even turned on the webcam. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, I had already just like had it at that point and have no plans of removing it. Really? Yeah. So it's just like oh. you actually, because for me, facial hair, I always get like, it's like I have it and then I, the more I have it, the more I want it to go. Yeah, no, I've just accepted that I'm just going to get food in it and that's fine. Okay. Like, are you like able to? Ghost. Are you able to grow a beard like a? I can do like a goatee, but my cheeks have like like fifteen hairs on each. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was it's it's interesting. Like when you finally take the plunge into growing facial hair for the first time, because like for me it was mustache first, and this this was all like in my stream arc. Like when I started streaming, I had never grown facial hair, yeah. and then grew a mustache, and then I was like, I bet I could grow a grow uh, like a goatee, and then I grew a goatee, and then. I bet I could just grow a beard. And then I could, but like it it never seemed like I actually could until I did it. It was like, nah, this is going to look like total shit. 
Yeah, I just did it because I was constantly wearing a mask and I didn't have to show everybody the, <laughs> no, the in-between no. phase. COVID started and I started growing out my beard. My beard, dude, I was listening to advice online of them saying like, oh, if you're growing a beard for the first time, just don't even touch it for three to four months. And I was that dumbass that actually listened to that stupid advice. It's a really stupid advice. It's like, <laughs> you're going to look like a fucking homeless person <laughs> for for three months because it's just everywhere it, it's almost like as if they don't trust that you can just trim your own beard that's what like yeah. online assumes um but i did what they said and i had a mask on the whole time so whenever i went out in public i just fucking wore the face mask and it was good so that was a good time to grow it and uh yeah i'm, I'm growing out my beard now though i'm actually like really trying to dedicate myself to growing out a long beard currently it's gonna take several months or a year or two but yeah we'll see yeah. we'll see if i stick to that we'll see if tomorrow i just fucking shave it but yeah okay um yeah shit what do you guys think we covered most of the topics wrap things up i for one i've had a wonderful time i have too this is nice I cold? am for one a simple man. When I see a nam, I type a nam. I know that's right. Nam. So true. Uh, like anytime I come on for these, I feel like less of a podcast and more just uh, like a uh, yeah, we're just like vibing, just chatting the shit, you know? Yeah, this this yeah. I like these podcasts. This this is what I want the podcast to turn into is like just getting on. I gotta I gotta get on everybody for the first time. And then as soon as I have, you know, like 500 people I've had on for the first time, then it's just like from there on out until the day I die, just getting on repeat guests, just chatting you know, the shit. Yeah. I'll see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not on by, say, Big Cast 1000, well, then Sager fucking you. hates you. <laughs> exactly <laughs> that. You. If I haven't had you on by episode five, I hate you. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, so fucking oh, fuck. Or sorry, 14. I hate you. Yeah. Uh, wait, what was, was I 14? Weren't you that 14? Might be right. Were you 14 or 16? Whatever I episode he is, you went on right. to that. I think you were 14. Yeah. I think a cold one was eight. The, okay, yeah. I know we were like a few episodes apart. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Um, all right, guys, down in the description. Go follow Whale and a cold one on their socials, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all that bullshit. And uh, next week, we're going to be having Hey Jace on the cast. So No way. Yeah, that one's going to be... That chest thing. Oh, oh, I'm stoked for that. I'll yeah, listen to that one. I'm All fucking... right, good to know you don't hate Hey Jace then. Well, too late for that. I'm still getting him on. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, liking the, I'm honestly liking this meme now. Yeah. It's yeah, a good, a good meme. meme. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 just waiting for the Toontown meme to fucking spark up. A <laughs> I will I will start this shit like within the next yeah. week. You're gonna be noticing more people calling shit too. Not like bro, I'm at Arceus Library right now doing <laughs> the favor Toontown. for this shit, bro. It actually like legit looks like Toontown it does. for real. It really does. It really does. They fuck. Yeah. They fucking butchered Zaya. Holy shit. Mm. Um. Anyway. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, real talk, boys. I had a great time tonight. I appreciate you guys' time just chatting the shit with me. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. If you guys want to support the cast, down in the description, there's a Patreon link. But other than that, that's it for me. Any any final words from you two? Man. <laughs> Cash, grass, or ass ain't no one rides for free. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you in the next one, boys. Peace.